welcome back. It's Friday night, and it's time for chaos. Uh, when I first logged on, uh, I, I had my screen and my microphone shut off because I was still doing some prep, uh, but I couldn't help but overhear uh, Kate talking about uh, another Kate, uh, Kate Middleton. Um, we here at the network love a good conspiracy theory. There is a uh, NFL quarterback uh, by the name of Aaron Rodgers who's a, a real dumb dumb. And he Boo. loves a good conspiracy theory to the point where, like, he just goes on podcasts and they'll bring something up, and he's like, or he'll he'll bring something up, and people are like, the the like the onion keeps getting peeled back that this guy is a complete whack job, one of the greatest football players of all time. But I had never heard about this one that he started touting lately, and I think it is right up the Cthulhu Alley. So this is this is I'm reading this from the Daily Beast. But he went on uh this this like you and on guy talking about briefly once upon a time and not that long ago there existed the nation state of Tartaria. Has anyone heard about this? Yes. Oh, no. You've heard about Tartaria? I love, yes. I love a conspiracy theory. Like, I, it's, that's my version of comic books. Like, I will, yeah, just, this is an all timer. Love Uh, it. I'll, I'll, what did he have to say about it? Well, he just was like, yeah, this might be real. And like, when you hear what this is, to think that a, a, a human being could believe this, this utopian and highly technologically advanced civilization was founded somewhere in Central Asia, possibly created by giants or aliens and span the entire globe. Life in Tartaria was an abundant paradise powered by unlimited renewable energy and jam-packed with architectural marvels, the likes of which humans at that time could never dream of erecting. So, long story short, eventually, not unlike Atlantis, the nation of Tartaria gets wiped out. Um, But the people who believe in this conspiracy theory believe that there's no such thing as architecture. Architecture is basically a myth. Everything we know about buildings and whatnot was handed down from these Tartarians. The only reason there is anything that we consider architecture is because of what they left behind, uh, even though there is zero proof uh, this society so ever they, existed. So it's just, it's they not, invented it's they architecture. Don't, it's not that they invented architecture. It's like their, their, their level of architectural technology is way far superior than ours today, which is why you have these like grandiose, you know, old cathedrals that we can't really replicate now, which is why everything of ours is boxy, which is like, mm, or maybe That's they didn't want to spend a hundred years <laughs> building something <laughs> and didn't, and didn't want to spend millions and millions and millions of dollars on, on erecting like a cathedral. Um, Just they made the, the pyramids. Blocks, you know? They made yep. the White House. Everything. Yeah. Also, the there's like a whole World's Fair conspiracy yep. revolving around that because it's like, why were all of how were all of these vast like architectural like um, like magnificent buildings? Erected so quickly and then just taken down for no reason. Uh, where we like where we can't do that these days, and like look how beautiful these buildings are that existed back then, and how we don't have that now. Um, so that yeah, the, there's a whole the world. I love how the World's Fair ties into it because that's like that they were just trying to cover up it's- uh, these buildings that existed. And that's what, and that's why, you know, when you look at a old building, it says founded in da 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 and not built in da 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 because <laughs> what? it was actually built it's way the hell before. Tech, right? Yeah, it's, it's, I, I love all when this shit. When conspiracy theories get to that <laughs> point, I just get like pissed. Sometimes it's fun to be like, hee 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 hee, isn't this a fun story? But then it becomes like ancient aliens and then like, like, oh, Greek fu- uh, architecture and like the Greek statues and like they were perfect. And then it becomes like vaguely like, uh, fascist a little bit like yeah. it's very yeah. colonial it's very <laughs> colonialist it's like, a little bit like, it's very <laughs> colonialist because it's, it like, it's like oh then like what uh, <laughs> and not yeah. only that it's like oh these civilizations couldn't have erected like these b- beautiful buildings it must have been aliens, yeah. aliens. It's like, because yeah, we never would have been able to figure out bread like we accept like galactic <laughs> colonialism over like they could have just done it <laughs> yeah 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 there was a guy at the NFL combine uh, who's coming out of college? Who uh, it was? Uh, some, I don't know why he was asked anything that had to do with this answer, but uh, he answered some questions like, "Well, I don't know if I even really believe in space." <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yep. He's like, I, I don't know if I'm buying that. into planets and space and all that. Okay. It's like we we're done. We're done. Yeah. Well, let me let me ask you this, Rob. You ever been there? 
<laughs> yes. So what? It was. Uh, it was. <laughs> I was, was twenty five. <laughs> that was. Uh, it was three o'clock in the morning. Oh, he should have said that answer for after <laughs> he got drafted. It's all a Stanley Kubrick sound set. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be pretty oh wild, God. though, if all of a sudden one day all these whack jobs were right, and then we look like fools, and they will just dance on our graves. I feel like we would have a lot of more problems if they were right, and I feel like I wouldn't care. That's true. I wouldn't feel embarrassed. I'd be like, you know what? That just means that we have a lot more things we need to talk about. If they're yeah, right about aliens, about wrong. yeah, if they're right about <laughs> aliens, fuck yeah. Great. That means there's aliens. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, if the whole alien thing, it seems like in the past five years, they've, we've had a, a bunch of people, including the government, being like, yeah, yeah, no, there's aliens. Did you guys not know? <laughs> Did we not talk about this? Yeah, there's aliens. But it's different if all of a sudden one lands in Times Square. Like, what if during this recording, you start your phone starts lighting up? It's like, do you see the news? See the news? What? And you're like, oh, well, shit. Well, people will think we're in Miami recently. Not too long, not too far back. Uh, there was a whole thing in, in like Miami with like a mall. Where like a bunch of people caught. Did you see that? I did see that. I think that was like a camera trick sort of thing. But like, I'm talking about global lands in Times Square. Like and Independence like, Day. Yeah, like Independence Day stuff. Mm, or yeah. not even like the, the day the earth stood still. Like oh, it comes down, plot two, Barada, Nick two style where mm -hmm. everyone's just gathering around and they come out and then just anni start annihilating people. I don't know what's going to happen. It's just, well, a day's going to come. Don't live in a major city. Okay, if, if, if yeah. Hollywood has told me anything, this shit only happens in a major city. And when it's not in a major city, they playfully hide in your closet with a trail of Reese's Pieces. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> if you've learned anything. Um, well, hopefully uh, there will be no conspiracy theories about what happens in tonight's episode. Because uh, we are now starting the second half of season two tonight. And we're starting it with a shebang. Uh, I have my notes here on what happened last week, and they are, uh, they are, it is wild. It is wild that we've spent, uh, what now, two and a half episodes in Lesser Edale, and what a time we've had in this little village. I want to, I want to spend the entire rest of the campaign in this little, in this little <laughs> town. It's funny, this was a pit stop on the way somewhere else, and I feel like we've forgotten about the summer else at this point oh, every year oh, like, somewhere else. Done. Oh, yeah. why did we come to we were going to inspect a safe uh, a installation right. on yeah. Yeah, yeah you left london um, we went on the wrong day yeah <laughs> you kind of had three goals in mind you were like uh we could we could follow this lead up from jackson elias that from the scoop the some sort of multiple mysterious deaths in the town of lesser edale then in Darby, there is this uh, Henson Manufacturing. You found a receipt about a safe that was installed there, and you found this receipt in a secret uh, like room beneath the Penu Foundation. And then also heading to the countryside here north of London, there is this uh, uh, Vaughn's uh, sort of home. Eagles Grange is in this area as well. So you've got three things you can do out here because you're really, uh, you know, you've got stuff to do back in the city, but you also like felt like it was time to, to stretch your wings a little bit and uh, see what else you can discover. So you've come to Lesser Edale and you've started to investigate this. And as much as the people in town uh, sort of at least giving the off the, the vibe that it's a case closed, um, there's this undercurrent that it's not a case closed. And now you've kind of cracked it wide open. We started last week at the Laughing Horse Inn. Uh, with the previous episode, you, we saw Feruz and Margu, uh, Margu, Margo arguing. Margu. I, I took Margo and arguing and made Margu. <laughs> they were you know, so much arguing. They were just having a heated discussion about the order, the secret society that they both belong to. It kind of been a, like this understated thing between them where they never really talked about it. Finally, it comes out and they realize they both belong to this same secret society. Carter noticed a man watching them. Carter uh, pretended to act drunk, kind of got blocked on his way out, gets outside, and the guy is like way ahead of him, cuts into the woods. Carter follows along stealthily, sees the man get into a car and take off into the night. Carter records the license plate and, uh, you know, remembers that it's different from the license plate of the car that Margot uh, was able to spot uh, outside of Empire Spices back in London. So you guys are being watched? Someone is being watched? Is it the same person? Are they different people? And if whoever it is, who are these people? We come back to the pub and we see Vaughn approach the sort of 
uh, man of the pub right now, Lawrence Vane, the son of Lord Arthur Vane, the sort of ruler of the area. He's holding court here in the bar, charming all the regulars. Um, you speak, and uh, he invites you and the mystery squad up to Plum Castle for dinner the next night. You guys decide, rather than turning in, let's go shake down the vicar for some more information. So <laughs> you walk over to the vicar's door, you go in there, you're like, hey, but now you're hiding stuff. You start rummaging through his papers. <laughs> He's like, please, no. And, you know, it turns out he was uh, hiding some stuff. You you first question him about the, the order of the Derwent Valley Druid, the order of the Derwent the Derwent Valley Order of the Golden Druid, something like that. And he's like, it's a historical society. It's no big deal. And it seems like he's telling the truth. Just had a really funky name. But then you look at a, a, the document that he's translating from Latin to English. Vaughn speaks a little, reads a little Latin, uh, rolls an extreme success, and you, you read about a, a local legend of a large hound-like creature that wanders the area. The locals believe its howls foretell upcoming death. You see a passage relating to the trials of the witches of Blakewell in 1608 where a lady Evangeline Vane, as a witness for the prosecution, gave testimony against two women accused of witchcraft who were found guilty guilty and killed. But before being killed, one of the women, uh, a young witch by the name of Annie Stafford, put the mark of the beast on Vane. Perhaps this is this, uh, this curse that has befell them because the vicar reveals that something is wrong with the daughter. Something is wrong with Eloise Vane. Lord Arthur and Lawrence ask the vicar for help and he has begun researching into the history of the family, trying to discover what's going on, but he doesn't speak Latin, he doesn't read Latin, he's trying to translate these old documents. He agrees to, to, to let you in on the investigation. Come back tomorrow morning and we'll dig into it. So you do return the next day, and it seems like he stayed up all night, and he found a journal of an older vicar, which mentioned similar events that previous Vane generations experience. It seems that some change happens to Vane women on their 21st birthday. It's unclear whether this is related to the moon or their age. Vaughn tries to really dig into his Latin knowledge a little bit more and uh, fails a pushed roll. But Feyruz, uh, uh is able to kind of dig a little bit deeper with her understanding of, of cryptology and, 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 and just general uh, you know knowledge of languages. And you realize that this had to do with something much, much darker. That way, way back in the day, the veins... Uh, like worship some sort of charnel god and this put some taint on their bloodline they were into like cannibalism and really dark shit that added this taint that has flown stop, through the bloodline of the veins stop saying it it's a taint man it's a taint man taint man <laughs> that's taint just what fault. it's called that's what it's called <laughs> taint my and side note kind of glad we skipped dinner <laughs> <laughs> it's a big it's a big taint and uh <laughs> It it, it, it it appears to be not maybe werewolf related. You thought maybe the moon werewolf. This looks like the taint of the ghoul. And worse yet, it seems like it's incurable. It seems like the only way to stop this affliction is by granting a ghoul a second death. This is not the news that the veins want to hear. The vicar is coming to grips with it as well. Agrees to go with you to Plum Castle to kind of break the news. You show up late for dinner um, because that was the result of the failed pushed roll. You kind of lost track and got so excited in the research that you show up late. Um, Lord Arthur Vane very stodgily uh, comes down the stairs and you guys lay it out for them. The priest uh, is backing you up. The vicar is backing you up. And uh, basically... I think Lawrence is like we should. Uh, we, we we need to we need to exhaust all options here. We need to do something. She is innocent. She has no idea this is happening. Um, we we've been drugging her, my father and I, and bringing her down to the basement and locking her up. The minute that we knew that this was going on to stop any more deaths, she would never hurt a fly. Please, you've got to help us. Please, why don't you come down and take a look at her? 
And so he spirits you downstairs into the Wait, wait, sorry, Troy. I I hate to interrupt the recap. There was, and I I was going to ask this in a second, but it seems like chronologically it makes sense to do it now. We stopped at the, like, library, right? And we found a book that had a similar symbol on it to some other thing that was just in there that they never knew, right? Yes. He took you to the library so that you could continue your research. You found a journal from a Lord Edgar Vane, which contained a symbol written in what looks like to be blood um, that corroborates that the veins once practiced dark worship and praise to God that satiated their foul desires. They engaged in cannibalism, unspeakable acts with corpses, and more in the name of this God. And the blasphemous idol was known as Mordigani. And you think that, no, that's not what it is. It's 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 a, another God. Um, I can't remember what you've... I think it was Mordigian. Mordigian, like okay. Mordigian. I, was, I knew that, but I didn't know if you learned that. But you learned that it was this other God, Mordigian. Um, but there, beyond that, there was nothing of use in that book. No, that right? was that was it. Okay. it just sort that of just solidified confirming. this yeah. belief that um, it wasn't a witch curse. Although I'm sure that didn't help. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like we already we're already cursed, and you're going to give us the mark of the beast. Come on, <laughs> you think they would cancel each other out? No, it was because they did these horrible things, and the god has infected their bloodline. Right. So okay, sorry. Keep yeah, keep going. Lawrence Vane goes to take you into the like the old family dungeon so that you can examine her or, or even speak with her. They don't know if she's even transformed this evening. It used to be tied to the moon. Now it's happening more frequently. So just to be safe, they drug her every night and drag her down there and lock her up. You go downstairs to the dungeon. He brings you towards her cell and she's gone. Let's do a very important my hands are Why did so I use, sweaty uh, I used almost all my luck last game hey use it or lose it right now you get a better chance of gaining some back yeah right? Ooh, finally I Bang. failed my luck roll hey congrats we Bang. love to see it Ooh. I succeeded <laughs> oh shit no wait <laughs> I, rolled. I, I rolled sorry I rolled sanity hold on luck oh. roll over <laughs> which it which I yeah. failed Folks, you'll be happy to know I got one, count them, one point yeah. of luck back. <laughs> Huzzah. I, I got, got four back. Juicy nine. A juicy I got seven. Nine. Hey, we all got luck. That's got to sit. That's, that means something. I got a whole 12 <clears throat> points of luck now. You guys will live forever. Ooh, damn. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take you right back to this moment. I imagine Lawrence is like, no, no, no. No, 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 no! This is this is impossible. Five father and I carried her down here and locked her away. He's he's looking through all the other uh, cages in the area. He's like, no, it was. We always bring her to this one here. It doesn't make any sense. He he jimmies the door. It's like the cage is, is still locked. She she couldn't have just been. Uh, she couldn't have just disappeared into thin air. Um. All right. Uh. The four of you uh, just to search down here, and I'll uh I'll, I'll I'll search the rest of the castle. Um. Here, and he just throws you like a thing of keys. He's like, this opens uh, all of the. Cells. Um, I, I just want to make sure she isn't upstairs. If you hear me yelling, come up. But whatever happens, you must keep her alive. If you find her, you must keep her alive. Please. She does not know what she does. And he just rushes up the stairs uh, to go back uh, to like look around the house to see if she's at large because it's unclear like if the servants even know what the extent of this is. Um, so yeah. he's rushing up there to check the house. If you hear his screams, you know to go up there. In the meantime, (laughs) you are left in an ancient dungeon. So when we came down into the basement, was the door to the basement unlocked? Uh, The door to the basement was locked. It was. In fact, he grabbed a key off a little thing on the wall. I made a note of saying that, unlocked the door and went down. So it was a very small window so far that the beast could be upstairs. So I... Immediately, I feel like Vaughn just wants to uh, take a look around this cell and see how, if there's any sign of escape, um, and how, through what um, egress could possibly this this Eloise could have could have gone through While through a window, look, through a crack in the floor, through the door. I have my shotgun out, and I am keeping watch. Right. Okay. Shotgun. <laughs> Lights up a cigarette, uh, takes out her gun. Well, he seemed rather disturbed at that news. <laughs> Carter's just like patting himself, like, oh, fuck, what do I, I think I have this knife still. Shit. Yes, and uh, I think Vaughn is packing his 32 revolver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Carter just has a knife. 
<laughs> Great. You really ought to go shopping yeah. for you just, these days. I miss those machete days, man. That was my jam. <laughs> Fuck. All right, so the gate was locked. So the so the door to the cell was also locked. The door to the cell was it's not locked. Like it was broken open, Hulk style. She's got yep, the bars. The bars oh, look it was like. Locked. The, yeah. yeah, the bars yeah. look like they've been uh, scratched at. Certainly, like they they look a little bit bent out of shape. Maybe someone could have slipped through. Um, you know, oh, you know, she it, was. We, she was. It seems like, by all accounts, she's a, a slight woman. So maybe she woke up and got out. They they are a little bent, but they're not like Hulk smash bent. Right. Yeah. Can we do a little spot hidden to see if uh, if we can rummage around and, and there's something amiss, a little secret passageway, perhaps, a little, a little anything? Yeah, let's, uh, you open up the door, you go in there, you see this fresh straw on the ground. Oh. Um, and, uh, they care. Give me, give me some spot hidden, so whoever's in there looking around. Extreme success. Ooh, nice. Okay, okay. Yeah. I've got to put my dice down. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so extreme success. You all go in there and you're kind of looking around, investigating. I'm keeping watch. You're keeping watch with your shotgun uh, all around. It's dark down here, and there are other cells that like are bathed in shadow. You know, I'm sure you're taking inventory of the whole room, but right now you seem to be focused on this one cell. So Margo is just watching, listening for every little sound. You hear something go across the floor. Point your gun to <laughs> a mouse. It's just darkness and rows and rows of empty cells. Beirouz starts looking around, and your eyes are drawn towards the back wall, and you are feeling around, looking for any sort of clue, and you find a rock that seems to be um, loose in the wall. Is it like removable or do I push? Like, can I just see like five? I start, I, I push it in first to see if it pushes in. You push it in first. And as you push it in, you hear this like, <laughs> and all of a sudden a like little chunk of the wall on the Southwestern portion starts to slide open. Um, everyone? Huh? <clears throat> uh, um, I believe, I, I believe this, uh, you know, it's very strange to have a dungeon in which uh, clearly there's a mode of escape. <laughs> Seems <But> counterintuitive. <laughs> they must not have known about it. This is crazy that they would, by chance, put her in this cell. <laughs> she found how long, how long has, this, has, has this existed? Have they always put, I'm, I'm baffled. I have so many questions, but um, shall we? Should uh, we looks, this looks the- ancient. This mechanism, you hear it like whirring underneath the ground. It's like an ancient sort of mechanism. You would think it's not that strange for them to have like another way of perhaps getting out of the building if the castle was ever under attack. You start uh-huh. like spinning through your head of like why they would even have this and just well, shit luck for the veins, maybe. Yes. Or perhaps up uh, secret passageways to uh, to fell altar rooms where civilized eyes should not uh, peep. Um, mm. Well, hey. has anyone... Um, Go ahead. Does anyone have hunting experience that uh, is just get at, getting at, uh, you know, is anyone able to track uh, uh, successfully? No. My tracking uh, skills are kind of shite, but... Uh, I did it once go. before in our <laughs> <laughs> adventures. Are, they, are there any footprints on the ground? Any... Um, I will. I will attempt it. I will attempt it too. You know, screw it. But uh, it's not. You know, looking to see if there's any. Does, does this look like somebody had recently gone through, mm-hmm. or if there's any? I. Uh, I rolled a five under ten. That's <laughs> amazing for tracking. Hey, five under ten, hard success. Amazing. Well, the good wow. news is it looks like this sort of secret. Uh, entrance or exit has not been used in a long time so there's a thick layer of dust that now has Uh two enormous footprints in the dust leading out through uh, looks like some sort of crypt up ahead wait so it hasn't been used in a while but there are two big footprints in front of it going into it no there are two footprints going out like from the cell into this 
So it had been unused it, for quite some time until very recently where there are footprints that we can see. Is that right? Right. So it seems okay. like, you know, whoever was in here found a way out. Um, can I check the chains and see if they, were the chains broken? Like, or are they just, or are they, they just unlocked? Are the chains broken or unlocked? The chains are sh- uh, pulled off the wall and the metal uh, sort of cuffs have been shattered. Okay, maybe so forcibly have, crushed. Maybe not she unlocked. could have uh, escaped from the chains the whole time, but was trying to find another way out and didn't want to give up her uh, spots. Like, maybe she can still reason when she's this way. I, I could. Perhaps, or just by clawing at the at the wall, she could have um, simply by chance stumbled upon um, this curious stone that Monsieur Blon found. It's quite possible. I, and I look again to the floor to check if there's one set of footprints or two. Uh, looks like one For that set of was when Mordigian carried you. <laughs> there's one <laughs> one set of footprints uh, leading out, and they are, I mean, it's twice the size of any human mm. footprint. My God. Um, mm-hmm. Do we pursue? Uh, this this beast may be at large on the grounds. We, we could inform uh, Lawrence. That we that we found that that his that his prison is in fact um rather pregnable. Uh, she could be anywhere. I don't think it's the worst idea in the world to just regroup with everybody, get everybody together, strengthen numbers, and yada yada. It wouldn't hurt to have him around simply because we're not sure his involvement in this. Mm-hmm. Yes. And if he is with us, mm-hmm. at least we have proof that of of his involvement. Now we did do, I believe, uh, we did some sort of psychology check on this man, right? That we crushed. Didn't we like get the sense that he he wasn't wasn't fully telling us everything? Oh no, that's right. I'm not sure. Yeah, initially, I believe Vaughn got the sense. Yeah, I think initially there was a little bit more than meets the eye. but in talking with the vicar, you realize that it's quite possible this is all because they they were trying to find a cure. And so they yeah. weren't just openly discussing it with anyone. Now, he still gives you a, a vibe, but uh, oh, I at thought least... We, I thought when we came to the castle, we were talking to them. I thought we did we did one, but like in the library or something. Yeah, I but. think you did do a follow-up in the library when they came down the stairs, and it seemed like everything was on the up and up. Right, okay. They seem sincere at that point. But wouldn't it be worth at least telling him for one, if if he is so concerned about his daughter, he would want to go with us if we knew where where she might have gone. If we don't trust him, this gives him plenty of opportunity to fuck off elsewhere, as it were, to do whatever it is if he had Mm -hmm. ulterior motives. So I think either way, perhaps we go grab him Take him along with us. Yeah. Is there a way, Troy, is there a way to tell from this uh, door that it can be opened, the secret door can be opened from the other side? Um, is there a mechanism? There, there appears yeah. to be a mechanism on the other side as well, like a giant lever. Hmm. And and you mentioned something about a crypt. Do we, we As we approached Plum Castle, we, we saw some outbuildings and stuff. Would, do we get the idea that you would emerge from perhaps a a, a sepulcher? Oh, he did say out- there was a, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, outside. when you came up on the castle, you did see some outbuildings. Um, if you try to orient yourself to where you are, you're a little turned around, but it does make sense that this may, you may be underneath where some of those outbuildings were. And uh, okay. yeah, you I mean, I see... think he literally said there was a crypt, right? He literally, yes. he said there was something like there was a cemetery on the grounds or there was something we could examine. Yeah. He did make mention and said that right. he would take us there. Uh, Either way, we should at least bring to the attention of Mr. Lawrence Vane the, the laxity of his security. I mean, yeah. Yeah, and this isn't cowardice, by the way. I want to point that out to everybody here. This is not us being scared to go down into a deep, dark crypt tunnel. This is us being responsible <laughs> adults no. and wanting Absolutely to. Absolutely not. Yeah, no, no, no. Just takes a flask yes, out. Yes, yes, quite, 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 quite. <laughs> I'm scared. Yes, and um, I'm. Uh, well, there's there's no shame in admitting that, uh, uh, sir. Um, 
So, shall we? And uh, shall we retrace our steps back yeah, up into yes. the main? You don't even get halfway <laughs> up the steps towards... when Lawrence Vane comes rushing down. It's like she's, uh, she's. I haven't seen her anywhere. No, no one has has, has seen her. Um, and 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 everything seems to be all right upstairs. Or have you learned anything? Have you have you have you, have you seen her? Do you, have you heard her? Well, we haven't heard. We've learned a great deal, Mister Vane. Yes, un- unfortunately, we we don't we didn't hear your daughter herself, but we do suspect where she has exited from. Show me. If you would care to follow us. Yes, please, show me. Take and, him downstairs. Um, take him and, down? um, yes, we'll hustle him back. And he is just... And Lawrence is the brother, Lawrence right? Is the brother, Lawrence is the yeah. brother, that's his Okay, sister. that's his with us. Yeah, he is, his jaw drops when he sees the door in the back. He's like, what? What? What is this? Where, where does this lead? It seems what to it lead to the sepulcher out of, uh, just... Out on the grounds, you had no idea that you were leaving her in a in a prison room with such an easy means of. Escape. Oh no, of course not. We originally had her in her bedroom until she broke out of there. We thought she would be safe down here when we picked the one room that seems to lead elsewhere. Um, have you have you explored in there yet? Oh no 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 no. no. We I wanted to, bravery. but everyone pulled me back. It's, Not I, for lack I, of bravery. We need to know where it leads. If, if she has a way out, she could be out there harming people again. Last time she got out, uh, luckily she only killed an animal. But every other time she, she attacked people. We, we, we need to, uh-huh. we need to uh, approach with caution, but with haste. Well, yes, I would say time yes, is the Yes, I suppose here. so. Um, um, well, uh, uh, do, you have any, do, you, do you happen to have any long guns, Mr. Vane? Guns. We shouldn't. We shouldn't need any guns. No, we can't. We can't k- kill her. We can't harm her. Like I said, she she doesn't know what she's doing. If you were to shoot her, you have the uh, the, the the chance of killing her. We can't raise the dead. Listen, man. Actually, as far as thinks about her spell that she has, <laughs> no, 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 no. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I mean, Margo I, I, is just I, like I, holding her shotgun. I understand. I, I may, I'm just holding him by the shoulder. I'm just like, well, how do you propose that we subdue such a beast that could shatter these? Like lifting up the the steel manacles. Um, force must enter in, Mister Vane. Um, I, I, I think it may be time to grapple with the thought that your sister may be no longer herself entirely. I understand. Well, violence of any sort must be a last resort. I'll go first. I love perhaps, it. Perhaps there is some vestige of her that will, will see me and know I yes, should not. Yes. I love okay. the if, idea. If there yes. is any part of her that, that still clings to her, her life, uncorrupted by this by this beast, then you are the one most equipped through through consanguinity of blood to, to, to speak to what remains of Eloise within her. Uh, if she right. goes to attack you, though, I will pull the trigger. I've... Well, hopefully it won't come to that. Let's just let's just proceed with caution. Uh, do, do you even hear anything up ahead? We do. Uh, listen. And, yeah, I mean, let's listen. Listen. <laughs> Good. listen. Fail. Where is my? Oh yeah, the Raiders. Oh, I got a great feeling about this. <gasps> Extreme success rolled a four under sixty-five. Wow. Nice. I got Extreme a hard success. Nice. I did not get a hard. I got a regular. Regular success. All right, those of you who failed or regular success, you don't hear anything. With your extreme success, Feyruz, the only thing you do hear is like wind, which wouldn't make sense because like, if this is some sort of secret area, it would be closed off. But you hear like in the distance, wind from outside. Mm-hmm. Um, let's. Odd. Let's proceed with caution. I, I need to let my father know, but for the time being, let's just let's just see. I think we yes. may be too late if we hear wind. It might be the door on the other end is open. We don't know anything yet. Well, duh. <laughs> okay, let's all right. Just, I'll just cut. He's, 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 he's distraught right now. But <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I yelled. That's my sister. <laughs> my flesh and blood. Yes, Mr. Vane, no doubt. But, but it's it. But uh, Fräulein Sauer, though her harsh. Teutonic lack of tact um, is, is perhaps um, leaves leaves something to social graces. Speaks true. She she may be on the loose. Right. So haste, it seems, is of the essence. Keep your weapons down. Let's go. And he walks into this dark, uh, like crypt, and uh, he's like, uh, 
hold on, I need a, a torch. And he runs back in the other room and grabs like a torch from a sconce on the wall. It's like, I can't see anything down here and I didn't bring a flashlight. Um, all right, let's go. And it's like a very, you know, a relatively narrow sort of passageway. And he's up front with the torch. And it's like making all these dancing shadows of the five of you on the wall. And you walk down that sound of the wind. Now you all start to hear it, but it's still very, very distant. And eventually it opens into a chamber. Mm. And there seems to be uh, one exit from this chamber, but the exit doesn't interest you. What interests you is the statue that you see and a circle on the floor with like, uh, it's like a circle with all these lines etched in it, some sort of uh, symbolic uh, situation on the floor, all in front of this statue of, it almost, ha it looks like it has the body of an octopus, like tentacles going in every direction, but it's it's got that lamprey-like mouth on the underside, which just sort of yeah. reaches out with teeth and it's, uh, you know, all of the tentacles, they're not like, it's not like artistic, like they're all going out in a straight direction. So it almost looks like an upside down star. Um, everybody give me a sanity roll. Yeah. Oh including god. Lawrence Vane. My god, it's just as I thought. The altar of Mortician. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wouldn't believe who failed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. uh, any any fails besides yes. old Vonnie? <laughs> no. Okay, Vaughn, no, give me past. one D four sanity loss. Do you got it? You got it. You got it. Yep, 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 yep. Right. How much is uh, can you lose before you become temporarily insane? Six, I think. Five. five? Is, is it's five. different uh, for everybody. Like f if when you lose five and one. Pop. Right. That's when you have to roll yeah. to see if you fully understand it. Uh, but it's a oh, percentage in a day, yeah, that, where mm, yeah. things get yep. bad. Um, as as Michael behind the scenes just pointed out, pointed out, eight for Vaughn. Eight is your breaking point for Vaughn today. All right. So we're oh, halfway great. there. Did Sounds you good. lose four? Yep. No. No. <gasps> oh, no. Wait, you Wait, no, you said a D four. I'm sorry. D4. I'm sorry. D four. D four. Okay. Not oh. four. Just a yeah, second. D four. Hold please. Hold please. No. Hold, please. no. <laughs> Okay, people are waiting to <laughs> process your call. <laughs> oh, no, no. It was a four. no, I did roll a four. Shit. No, 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 no. All right, okay. so okay. Vaughn, how does this manifest? I, I'm surprised oh, that these statues still God. shake you so. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I avoided looking at the terrible artwork, the 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 primary painting in the studio of Shipley. Um, but now I'm, I am beholding, as it were, an artwork from another world. Um, and I even suspected this. We've, we've learned ever since the, the, the name of this chthonic deity um, came into my mind from looking over the, the um, Latin texts. It's sort of been gnawing at me. And now to behold it in all its in all its horror, um, just makes me. I, it's not so much the statue itself. It's more that I, in a flash, my imagination um, conjures up an image of what worship in front of this thing must have consisted of, and I am I am my mind is suddenly processing an image of some sort of bloody and perverse cannibalistic orgy <laughs> and and I'm reeling against the wall <laughs> did yeah. you see the blood orgy when you looked into the to the mask I think that was just you that was uh, just you yeah I'm um, sure you talked but, about it <laughs> but a similar, a similar, a similar image is being is being conjured here. Yeah, you look on the floor, you still see blood stains everywhere, ancient blood stains, um, like an oil stain yeah. in the basement that have ne it's never gone away. Bones everywhere, horrible, unspeakable acts must have taken place here in front of this tentacled worm. 
yeah, just there's an image in, in my mind of like some of, of Lawrence Vane, some some old ancestor of his, like turning towards me with a face like co- covered in blood, um, bits of scraps of flesh on its teeth and with a look on its face, not of horror, but of sublime and horrific pleasure. Won't you join in, uh, old boy? <laughs> <laughs> Your turn. Um, and as Feyre's tends like has a cut, grown accustomed to a certain look in Vaughn's eyes on a long, uh, you know, our time spent together, without saying anything, she'll slowly walk over and with her free hand go and like take Vaughn's hand in hers and just kind of squeeze his hand a little to yes, try to bring you. him back. Uh, thank you very, very much, Miss Jubron. <laughs> yes. Is what, this um? What is this place? What is, what is this place? Have, have we seen we've this learned. Oh, yes, we've, we've learned some things, not everything, but some things with the vicar, Mr. Vane. Can it be that you are truly entirely unaware of the history of your family, of their rather unorthodox practices of worship? I know nothing of the sort. I, 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 I don't. I, 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 were they into this? Were they worshipping this creature? Why in God's name would they build such an effigy? This has been sitting under Plum Castle all this time. Yes, not only, not only under your castle, grabbing him by the collar, not only under the castle, but in your very blood vein, in your sister's blood. It's not, it's not your sister anymore. It's not your sister anymore at heart. It's that. She's pointing As at you're the. F- freaking out. Margot's like by Carter has her gun up and like kind of steps beso- like behind him for like protection, being like she remembers when this happened in the lizard house, and you started grabbing her because you went like definitely insane. Um, so she's like, keep him away from me. He's going to lose it again. It's all right. It's all right. He's gonna he's gonna figure it out. Don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. And I'm I not. In, I'm not. <laughs> and I'm not insane. I think at that point I, I just kind of let go. Oh, you were and, dominated. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. you were dominated. But you see that look in his eyes. He's done this like, a few times. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, this is par for the course. But I think. <laughs> I th- but I'm, but I'm, I haven't. Or Vaughn hasn't had this this break. I think he'll kind of collect himself and almost see how scared you are. I'm just like it's quite all right, Sarah. Quite all right. Forgive me. Just a little shock. Yeah. One, one couldn't help but be shocked when beholding such a such a damnable artifact. Uh, I might see verse, so. Yeah, he's good. You're good, right, Ron? You're good. Yes. Keep yes, it together, quite. man. Yes. Mm. All right. Um, okay, so uh, there's wa- there's only one exit out of here. There's nothing else besides this statue. Yeah, there's one exit, and it is. Uh... It is open, but you can see that like it was another uh, passageway that was um, like s- hidden, you know. And there's right. a lever on the wall. Similar oh, to that was the another one. hidden one. Yeah, okay. another lever on the wall. Um, can Feyruz just, while we're in this room, just see if there's something we didn't yeah. initially pick up from yeah. the obviously being overwhelmed at the site? Yeah. Um, there's something to be gained in, in a closer look at this. Yeah, give me a little spot hit. Oof. Regular success. Regular success. Over by where that lever is, you see a piece of ripped clothing, like um, like it was like hanging from the lever. It's very, very mm-hmm. small, but it's like a white, uh, maybe a piece of a dress or a uh, shirt. Um, Feyruz will slowly walk over to it and gently touch it, see if there's any, like, to see, like, what kind of clothing it was, if there's any blood on it, if it smells at all. Shake a sniff. (laughs) You smell, um, it it does have a a weird bestial musk to it. Uh, it's very powerful on such a tiny little scrap. It looks like it might be a part of a a shirt or uh, or like bedclothes, like a nightgown. She'll pull uh, it over to her brother. Is this her, from her dressing gown? And he just takes it from you. He says, yes. 
Yes, this is... This is what she was sleeping in. Sometimes, the few times that I found her, her clothes were shredded. Um, I don't know if uh, it's a part of what what she undergoes or if she tore at them, but this means she must be that way. I, I, have, I have no idea even where we are, I, somewhere on, on the grounds. Um, I, uh, let's, let's, let's move forward and, and, and see what we see. I, I, this is all too much for me to take right now. God worships and whatnot, but right now I just need to find my sister. Yes, 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 yes. Let's, let's go. And he, he walks towards that opening and he kind of peers through and he says, It's the mausoleum. This is... And he just walks ahead of you into this. He's like, this is the... This is the vain mausoleum. This this, this is one of, one of the buildings outside of the castle. This has been in the family for centuries. Uh, my mother is buried here. This infernal place was under our noses the whole time. I had no idea that there right, was look, a... Lawrence, chill, chill out. Come back here, man. Don't get ahead of us. Yes. But look, the, 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 door, the door leading out is, is open. Please keep she, it down. She must have escaped. Yeah. Vaughn will follow. He's going into the into yeah. the crypt and. Um. Eloise, no. Eloise, shut, 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 shut up! Sorry, <laughs> I, just, I can't find her. How did your mother pass? She fell down the stairs. And I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, terribly sorry, old man. Bad sneeze. Uh, I think she. They we had mentioned before that she uh, she died in childbirth. Oh, childbirth. childbirth. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, right. Eloise. Giving birth Eloise, to yeah. Eloise. Right. Right. Oh, that's right. You're right. Um, yes, we, we buried her here, and, and, and many of my ancestors were, were buried here. So they've these 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 people from from our our bloodline must have used this secret area as as a place of worship, hidden directly next to the the, the interment of 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 their their people. Most profane. I, I can't, most profane. I can't. I can't take this all in. But 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 she's out there now. Look, and you see that like the stairs leading up and out of the mausoleum is just the door to the mausoleum is wide open to the night. Um, Lawrence, where is your dad and the vicar right now? Are they still in the house? They're they're, they're, they're drinking scotch um, upstairs. The Um, hell? The the, the, the vicar is trying to calm my father down. Um, I I, I told him that Eloise, uh, I should should go to him. but time is of the essence. What should I do? What should I do? And he doesn't, he like, should I go to my father? Should, 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 we, should we go chase after her? Time is of the essence. The entire town is at risk. Listen, I don't think it would be very good if he was around to, and I say this as an aside, to one, either give our location away and then put us in danger, or two, if, if it comes to the moment that we must protect ourselves. I don't think he would take that very well at all. Yeah, but he might be the one person that can get through to her. Like, her seeing a familiar face, seeing her brother's face might be the only thing that saves everybody. All right, well, we might have to restrain two people tonight. Is there uh, some sort of uh, alert system you can let go for the town? No, no, we don't Carrier want your pigeon. No, we don't want to. We don't. We can't let them know. We can't let them know what's going on. We just need to go and and then find her and maybe maybe redirect her away in, into the woods. Uh, she'll she'll find her way home. Uh, there's there's there's, there's, there's there's this has happened before. Yes, when when she the last time she got out. Um, what if I what if I went up and got my father and um and we um. We, we drove into town and we, we meet you there and, 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 and reconvene and find out what you know. Uh, I just, I, I worry that they, every, everyone is in danger. Everyone is in danger. We, want, we don't want to make everyone nervous and let them but, know uh, that, that, that this beast is real and is out but, there. Shut, shut. It uh, must seem like he's trying Lord. to protect himself. hit me himself. with a shotgun. What, 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 Fuck. Would lure, what would lure her out? Uh, do you think? I, I, I mean, I, she, she's, she's probably... She's probably hunting. I, 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 I don't know. Right now, every minute we spend here, uh, she is out there looking for, for, for prey. So we're, we're up and outside, and there's nothing. Like we're, we're in the graveyard, the you're cemetery, still, no, you're whatever. You're still in the like this mausoleum, which has like extends off into several areas, but you see the door wide open. So there's right, like stairs leading up. Yeah, let's get outside yeah. and at least see if there's mm-hmm. like a uh, any sense of where 
She went, or she's just fucking standing right there. All right, so it's amazing. Yeah. You walk up the stairs and you just see the moon. Uh, it's not a full moon. Um, that doesn't. That's not f- until a week from Tuesday. Uh, you see Plum Castle, sort of like uh, to your right, and you realize that, like, yes, this was the mausoleum you saw when you first walked up <clears throat> to Plum Castle, one of the outbuildings, and. Everything bef- that lays before it is just, you see the city down below. Some lights on in some of the buildings. If you look closely, you think you can pick out the laughing horse. And then on the other side, uh, you know, the giant hill of Mom Tor. Um, but like, you just look, she could be anywhere. But like, it is a very clear, direct line from Plum Castle straight to the lights of the town. Can I do like a track roll? It sucks. My stat's not great, but... Can I try that to see where For sure. She's it's headed? it's dark out, it's gonna be a tough roll, but you can always try it. Yeah, it's gonna be a tough roll either way. <laughs> Even if it was broad daylight. Yeah, tracking at night. I failed. Yeah, you're well, looking. I, I also tracked I'm sorry I didn't declare this, but I but this is Vaughn is like, what the hell is going on? And I did succeed, just barely. Seven under ten. Wow. All right. That's you amazing. Do, you see um you know, the footprints in the previous room and the the sort of uh Shrine, those were very clear because that room had not been used in a long time. That's very clear to you. Very thick dust, big giant footprints. You come into the mausoleum, also hasn't been used in a while, but it gets a little more foot traffic than the place that hasn't been used, presumably in hundreds of years. So you're looking around, you see tracks leading up and out. They go into the dirt and they are pointed in the direction of the town. Um, Look, look there. All right, we don't have any time to go back to the house. I say we follow yeah. these things. Vain, now is not the vain. Now is not the time to for retreat. Now is the time, though. Everything inside you is is begging for for survival, for the instinct to preserve yourself. Now is the time to focus on the common good and go over the top, as it were. Come. Okay, you want me to come with you? What, what about my father? I could, I should, I could tell, I could tell my father. I could run back there, grab my father and the vicar, and, 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 and meet you. No. And tell him what? what he, he will do what? Yeah, no. He, I just. You're not going to alert the town. You just want to tell your dad. Yes, uh, yeah, he should. He should know. Um, but it will no, be fine. She did right. not go in that direction. If you're she right. goes down there and somebody sees her with a gun, they're gonna shoot at her. Our best chance is to get down there now. And right. try to prevent that. All right, let's let's go. Let's let's make haste. And uh, you begin. Like, are you are you running? Or are you just like, you know, it's, it's run, just yeah. lightly jogging. Yeah. Light light jog. Yeah, I think like, hurry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So you start hoofing it uh, to the town. And oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's downhill, yeah. which is nice. It was a little oh, bit. Okay. <laughs> Vaughn is, Vaughn is a, like a three pack a day smoker. So he's like. <laughs> 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 okay. uh, all right. So you get hoofing it downhill towards the town. I can't remember. I feel like it was like a mile, mile and a half. So it's it's a little bit of a, of a jog and you're trying to preserve your strength at the same time. You don't want to get winded in case, mm-hmm. you know, you come face to face with this thing. Um, how cautious are you being in terms of like being seen um, in the uh, worried? You know what I mean? Like a bunch of strangers coming into town with Lawrence Vane looking crazy. Are you concerned about that or is your concern? No, because I, I think for Pharaohs personally, if like people are concerned, they're just going to go inside their houses, which is what we want. So if okay. they, the more concerned look they see on our faces, for her, the better. But if we want to keep them as an ally, um, if we keep them in good graces with their town, maybe as we approach, we can like be a bit more uh, reserved with our hustle. Well, we okay. don't have to say we're looking for her. We can yeah. say we're looking for the beast or whatever. We don't uh, have to say anything. We can yeah. ju- and you just know. tell yeah. Lawrence like, hey, I know this is rough right now, but can you please just try to put on a face for the townspeople if we run into anyone? All right, so you start going down there. You're making good time. You're making speed. The city is like coming towards you. The city, the village lights on now you know there's the laughing horse there's constable tumwell's house there's the church there's harold short's house there's the the houses of the people whose uh, family members were victimized by this beast as you get to like the edge of town you hear a uh, like moaning sound and you see like in a field just just like just barely outside of town 
uh, a figure, large figure. It's like, ah, ah, and it's you know the way the, the 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 moonlight is. You can't quite make it out. It's this large shadowy figure, like. Ah, ah, ah. Do you think it's her still transforming, or someone drunk? I can't yeah. tell. How roughly how far away are we from the figure? I'd say you're about 300 feet away when you okay. first hear it, and then you you hear it first, and then you try you try to. I mean, is it the, the kind sound of sound that could be uh, misconstrued as howling, like what a lot of people have heard? It's possible. Yeah, there is a howl to it. It sounds pained. Yeah. Um, yeah. Von's that's either her like changing that's or, yeah. or perhaps a victim. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. Vaughn will kind of like try to military style like hustle up a little bit drop hustle up a little bit drop and maybe like scoot behind whatever limited Vaughn, cover what are you, what might are you be doing? provided by by grass and and fence posts and stuff Vaughn, tell us what to do man you're going you're going to some flashback shit what, what do we do <laughs> we drop down we hide what god's sake stay down until he has to. okay do we All see right. anywhere where we can maybe lower it if it's her or, uh, I guess Vaughn is just trying to close some distance between us and the, this figure yeah. to get a, to get a better look at it without drawing its attention yet. Closing. All right, give me a just give me a stealth roll just to see okay. if see what we say. All right, that's very fair. <laughs> <laughs> stealth and not my forte. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? I failed. Uh, you know what, though? I, I meant to say this before you roll. Uh, give yourself a bonus for uh, stealth oh, at night. You know, okay. it's, harder, oh, yeah, yeah. it's harder to see. So bonus, right. uh, re-roll roll, your roll. 10s die. Let's see. Even worse. <laughs> Even worse. Okay. All right. Um, here's what happens. You start to walk towards this figure, try, try to get a sense. And uh, as you get close, uh, the voice turns on you. <gasps> Lydia. Lydia. Is that you? Lydia, uh, oh, it's, it's time to come. It's time to come home, Lydia. Oh dear! It's time you oh. come, come to um. me, Lydia. I've missed you so. And he walks towards mm. you, and it's John Parkins, uh, right. Lydia's father. He does this, Lydia. Yes. Lydia uh, uh, if I wait a minute, I... you're not Lydia. Who are you? What have you done to my daughter? Snap out of it, Parkins. She's out here somewhere. She's out please, here. Please go back inside. It's late at night. Have you seen her? Have you Arkans, seen her? you're drunk with grief and with John Barleycorn. Back to your house, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing lie. Uh, she's, no, she's out. She's out here somewhere. And he looks at Lawrence Vane. He's like, You. You oh, the son of a bitch that. Joker! And he just fucking wallops Vane and what? hits him in the chin, and what? Vane drops to the ground. Can <laughs> I can I try to intercept that blow before it lands? You can. Not me. I'll Not you let can. It, happen. it happens. Not by very jumping quickly. in front of him, but by but yeah. The intention him out first. is to just fucking wall, and you know if he hits him, he's gonna drop like a pound of yeah. bricks. So. You know, a, give me a brawl roll here. Obviously, you're not okay. trying to punch him. We can work through what the maneuver is, but you're trying to, like, stop. It's a fighting maneuver. Like so. a grapple? Brawl, right. yeah. Oi, oh, oh, no. no. Fun. No. Wait, I gotta get, I gotta open the... Oh, it's, a, it's a 99 versus 55. All right, you're oh, lucky. Man. Because you have over 50, it's not a critical not failure, a but it yeah, is a failure. Uh, so yeah. you, I mean, as intended, you he, just like, you're not out. quick <laughs> enough. And he, boom, hits him on the chin and Vane just drops. He goes, yeah, you the one that did it. You took her away from me and you're hiding her in your castle. Lydia, he screams up towards the castle. Lydia, I'm coming to get you. Shut, you shut, do? shut up. Shut up, please shut up. <laughs> what do we do? Punch him in the face. He punched... Lawrence in the face, punch him in the face. Make him shut like, up. Oh, oh, what happened? Why did he? 
oh, and Vane's got like blood uh, dripping out of the front of his mouth like he's lost a tooth. Guy just cold cocked him. And it's just very, very hectic. And Vane is standing up and the guy's trying to get to Vane. I imagine you guys are interfering so he doesn't do it. He's starting to run and all of a sudden, everybody give me a spot hidden. Uh Oh, God. Oh, God. Fail. Failed. Hard success. Awesome. Vonular. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. Vaughn. Come back to us. It's gone. Vaughn has left the encounter. Like how you said I, vonular, like ambulance. My phone is gone. <laughs> gone. I, I'm so sorry. Yeah, my 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 Wi-Fi went out for just a second. Seems to be back. <laughs> back. Smooth again. At a back. suspensefully okay. appropriate time. Yes. Hey. What okay. were the results of your spot hit? M- mine. Yes. Yeah. yes. Spot hit. Great. Uh, let's see. Ooh. An extreme Ooh. success. Ooh. Nice. Not so good at deflecting extreme. punches. Very good at looking. And hard. <laughs> or listening, as it were. Or In listening. the hecticness of this moment, he lays Lawrence Vane out. He's trying to go after Vane, yelling up to the castle, making a big scene here in the night. You see other lights start to go on in the buildings on the outskirts of town, but with an extreme success. And then you'll hear this seconds later, Feyruz, with a hard success in the far, far distance, on the other end of town, perhaps, you hear a blood-curdling scream. And we'll be back right after this break. Oh my god. Still relying on digital dice rollers for your random number generating needs? There has to be a better way. Now, there is. With the new Glass Cannon Podcast Campaign 2 cast dice sets, you can generate random numbers right on the table. No more hassling with smartphone apps or programs on the internet. No more judgmental stares from the Matthews of the world. And now when you meet that special someone out at the club on a Friday night and they ask you if you own any sets of gemstone dice, you can say yes on your way to Sextown. Get your Glass Cannon Podcast Campaign 2 cast dice set today at glasscannonnetwork.com slash store. But order now. Quantities are extremely limited. Except for Joe Dice. We have plenty of Joe Dice. We're back, and uh, I neglected to mention at the beginning of the episode, I've updated our uh, our VTT cast of characters here. So now you can see uh, Lord Arthur Vane and Lawrence Vane uh, and cool. Vicar Jeremy Stratton. This is a good place. This is a godly man. Uh, <laughs> as well as Herbert Tumwell, uh, the constable. Or Hubert, oh. excuse me. Hubert Tumwell. I'll... Uh, See if I can show you those pictures. Oh, well, Tumble's got the hat on. Tumble's got the whole hat. Yep. Doesn't he seem like a guy that has the only phone in town? Mm-hmm. Um, yep. So they're all updated along with uh, Abdul Noisha, the owner of the Blue Pyramid Club, who you guys, uh, I don't know if you spoke with him or you saw him briefly, but I, when we're in the moment. I always forget, like, oh, here's a really cool picture of them. Nice. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've been trying to keep up with that, uh, at least between sessions, revealing stuff on there and... Uh, very interesting how much has been revealed already this season and how much yeah. is left to go. You guys are, it's the middle of the night. It's the moon is the only light up above and you are caught betwixt the village of Lesser Edale and Plum Castle where Eloise Vane, who is cursed by some taint in her bloodline that comes from worshiping a god of death an elder mythos god of death uh, and cannibalism. She has been cursed, like so many veins before her, to have this taint of the ghoul, perhaps. She is transformed in some way, and she has been let loose on the countryside. The first time this happened, someone died. The next time, someone died. I think it was uh, Mr. Osgood the first night. The guy who left behind a wife and two daughters. And the second night, it was Lydia Parkins. 
uh, leaving behind only her father, who you have just run into, uh, roaming around just outside of town, looking for his dead daughter, waiting for her to come home, obviously drunk. You heard a rumor that this is what he tends to do because he is so uh, unfathomably sad. He gets drunk and he wanders, waiting for her. He sees Lawrence Vane, who he already suspects had something to do with it because his neighbor saw Lawrence Vane on that night. You now know from talking to Lawrence Vane that Lawrence was out there looking for his sister. And that's why he looked uh, so uh, disheveled as he was looking for Eloise when the neighbor saw this. But John Parkins doesn't know that. Lays him out and starts yelling to the sky to... uh, to, uh, I'm gonna, she must be in Plum Castle. I'm gonna go get her. All this is going on, and you hear a scream in the distance. This is a scene, though. You've got a situation you're dealing with here. What do you, what do you do? Vane, Vane is not unconscious. He just got like dropped. Uh huh. Um, and then the guy is trying to get on him. A couple of you are holding him back. There's a lot of yelling, lights coming on in some of the buildings. Uh, you almost feel like the jig is up here. What do you do? <clears throat> I think. Carter starts screaming at uh, Parkins, uh, who's I'm still trying to like get at Vane or whatever. Uh, and he's like, "You hear that, Parkins? You hear that scream? It's the beast! It's out! We're tracking the beast right now!" The beast? What? What beast? What beast are you talking about? The thing that killed your daughter is out there, and I think someone just saw it. And when you say that, he like it's not like he sobers up, but it dawns on him what he knows when he's not drunk and what he knows even at his the height of his stupor that she was killed he's like (laughs) please go inside please go inside no fuck that fuck that come with us right now come get vengeance for your daughter let's go (laughs) he can barely walk (laughs) he just kind of like crumbles yes you're no good to us, Parkins. Go, go, good Lord, go back inside. Go no, home, Parkins, you're drunk. We God, are wasting go time with Parkins, him. Go you're drunk. <laughs> His daughter was torn apart three months ago. Get it together, old man. That's a quarter of a year. <laughs> oh, you guys aren't giving this guy enough Yo, uh, yeah. grace. Yeah, Vaughn, will give, Vaughn will give him his arm and try to lift him up and, and, and walk him back towards the town. Like The monsters uh, of the night have no uh, time for empathy. Oh, yeah, sorry. Man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Vane, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, whatever. Whatever. Don't Fuck it. We me. gotta go. Somebody I'm just screamed. I'm just gonna start running at this point. Yeah. 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 Of course. All right, she's just gonna shepherd him uh, to his house, push him through his, his fence. <laughs> so, now, Troy, so, Troy, you're saying it, this is on the other side of town, so we gotta run through the town? Yeah, you're basically running through. The most direct route takes you right through the town. I guess I'm running through town with my shotgun out. Guess yeah. you're running through town uh, with a loaded <laughs> shotgun. Okay, I'm not putting so, it away. So Carter's got an idea. Uh, there's a. You said there's a veterinary place. Uh, yeah, there's a veterinary uh, hospital. Is there a way? Would Would the vet have animals like there, like being kept there, like either in a pen in the back or something? I want to use. I want to get bait. Oh, interesting. Oh, um, I thought we were going tranquilizers. for tranquilizers. <laughs> Let's do that, too. <laughs> Let's do use that, too. Poor pets as bait. <laughs> right. Um, I mean... All right, so you want to break into the vet, the vet and just start grabbing, like, sick animals yeah. and, and drugs? Yeah. Well, I want to do the pee... Yeah. I want to do the pee-wee... Her- tranquilizers. Dude, yeah, the pee-wee yeah, Herman. Time. <laughs> the pee-wee right. Herman, like, running out of the flaming... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he's Snakes. like, Feyruz, that's a great idea about the tranks. You should do that. I'm going to see if I can get like a fucking sheep. Uh, <laughs> all right, so you just psh, elbow through the window of the vet. I'm not even going to have you roll. I want to keep the tension moving here. You break into this uh, vet hospital pretty easily. Um, you hear animals in the back. There's drugs everywhere. I mean, how quickly can one of you identify what may be some sort of sedative? Let alone one powerful enough for whatever your this Eloise has turned into. Uh, I don't think Margot has spot hits. What is it? Is it a uh, medicine or? Please no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is where you can kind of, uh, you know, tell me what you want to roll and see if it makes yeah, sense. Could you could you maybe roll a first aid and see if that would get 
that would imply that you know enough about yeah um, the reading the labels on on various yeah uh, bottles of salves yeah, and, the, and powders. I think first day could work. I mean, I'm gonna be straight with you. It's a tough check for you to just know. And if one Look, of you was a doctor, here's my ease, argument. I mean, here's my argument work. for Carter. Carter spent many years with an infirm old person. It's true. Who he was married to, who had all manner of medications that she was on. That's true. That's true. She may have had some sedatives. All right. So give me a first date. Carter. All right. Oh, <gasps> extreme success. Also extreme. Oh no, fuck! It's an eight under thirty-eight. It's it's pretty hard though. It's That's pretty, pretty hard. hard. <laughs> All right, so Feyruz gets an. Ex- I can't believe this. Feyruz gets an extreme success, and Carter gets a hard success. My God. Uh, all right, so you're rummaging around, <laughs> trying to think in the fiction of this game. You're just knocking shit all over the place, and Lawrence is like, "What are you? What are you doing? Why are we here? There's, there's someone is screaming. We, she must be there. We should go." It's either we shoot her with a tranquilizer dart or we shoot her with a shotgun. Which would you prefer? Um, oh, wait, I don't know. I don't know no. that these would be darts. We're probably looking at like just a ba- a bottle just full a, of powder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, probably um, a syringe that we'd have to... syringes. Or... Yeah, yeah. Barbiturates. So you're looking for barbiturates. I'm, I'm Googling, like, what sort of sedatives were used in 1920s. Animal tranquilizer. Barbiturates whatever. were first developed yeah. in 1864 and became a popular sleeping pill. Yeah, tell um, me more. So yeah. they were practiced... In between the 1920s and the mid-50s, barbiturates were practically the only drugs used as sedatives and hypnotics. So it's very possible... It makes sense that if they had developed these for humans, that they probably would have started to use the same things for animals as well. So I'm going to say that you're able to find some some liquid and some syringes. This is a wild gambit. I don't want to make it seem like, got this. Looks like a case closed. But I will say you do have some sedatives. You do have some syringes. Right. And there is... Uh, give me a luck roll. For an animal? For, to see if there's a sheep. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what you were hoping for. Failure. <laughs> Some sort of pre- oh yeah. Just wait, Rob, because it was ro- it was your idea. Let's see if there's a sheep there. Oh, I got to roll. So now I got to roll under the luck, right? Roll under for the sheep. luck, yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna do a group luck roll because mm-hmm. it was your crazy <laughs> idea. No, there's no sheep. <sighs> All right. It was a there 50-50. Is, there is a miniature schnauzer. <laughs> it might do. I'm gonna and grab it. Just it. looks up at you with these imploring eyes. Come with you me, buddy. You're gonna be fine. Home. A little bandage around its... Someone in chat being like, miniature schnauzers did not exist! (laughs) Oh, God. They were not bred until 1938. (laughs) Well, it's the 1920s equivalent of a miniature schnauzer, and it's got a little bandage on its leg, and it just looks at you all, (laughs) please don't use me I'm gonna grab him. Bait. All right, so you just (laughs) rip open the cage and grab the miniature schnauzer. He might not die. Come on. I'm gonna start... Not running. Oh make my it. god! We're make it. All right, so you just—I mean, I—I I really wanted to see the image of you running across town with a sheep under your arm, <laughs> but now you've got a little bandaged dog and some barbiturates, Adorable. and you run in the direction <laughs> of the scream. Uh-huh. Return to your homes. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Someone's like, "That's my dog." <laughs> you see, at the edge of town. Like sort of the the opposite edge. You're as far opposite <laughs> as Plum Castle. There is a large farm. Why do you know this farm? Because it is the farm where the woman was walking with her two daughters, Mrs. Osgood, the widow, whose husband was taken by Eloise, killed, and she is standing outside of her home on this pretty large farmland compared to the other houses it's one of the biggest like plots of land and she's just screaming at the top of her lungs i can't, I, I don't even do want to do it justice role playing wise cuz it, it would be too loud but she's saying help help it took them oh my god the children oh god help, help it oh. took them which way did you go that- yeah, after hearing that, I turn on the gas and yeah, I try to pelt it right up to this woman. Um, uh, and yes, where, where? Just like, which way? A, a creature, a creature twice as tall as a man and grabbed both my little girls and ran, ran off to the south with them. And she points in the direction 
of Mom Tor, you look up this hill and you see the ruins atop the hill illuminated by the moonlight. It's just like she just grabs you, Vaughn, by your shirt imploringly. She's very weak. She's not uh, hurting you at all. She's like, please, why has God chosen to torment me so? To test me so? Why? <laughs> and she just crumbles at your feet. My girls! My girls! Uh. We are tried in this veil of tears through suffering, but, but Miss Osgood, the Lord looks with compassion towards your suffering and also provides instruments of justice. And, um, yes! and it starts going, <laughs> just like runs runs off towards Montour. Is there Troy? Oh, is there anybody you're else? To tranquilize her. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no. Oh, and hold this dog. Yeah, I just give her the dog. Maybe this will make up no, for your children. it's a therapy animal. There, She's there. like, Rufus? <laughs> uh, that's my schnauzer. We oh need him God. for a second. Listen. No. <laughs> is there anybody else that's uh, around? Has it, Have people started sticking their heads out of the doors? And As like, you're running through town with a shotgun and a dog, there are people like starting to come out. Like, what is all the commotion? And they're all standing in the street now. And of course, uh, as Mrs. Osgood has been screaming, they're all looking in this direction. Some of them are starting to crowd around. And Lawrence is no longer the life of the party, able to be put on a face and be like, everything's all, all right, everyone. He is shook. He's, he's nursing a, a broken chin. And uh, they're starting to come over. It's it's becoming a bit of a scene. Okay. What's, what's going on? What's going Someone, on? Here? Like Carter's just like get the constable. Where's the constable? Um, and you see uh, Constable Tumwell, and he's in like uh, night clothes. He's wearing like a long, uh, like wee Willy Winky nightgown with a little cap. And he's like, "What? What is going on here?" <laughs> it's the beast. He, he took this chick's kids. We gotta get up to the. Is it mom tour? Let's go. What are you talking about? He took this chick's. Kids, I, 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 the beast, I took care of the, the beast. We don't have time to argue with you. You never took care of the beast. The beast is back and we must go. Uh, I don't have any of my- Back in your houses. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll keep the peace here and uh, go, go, just go. I'll keep the peace. Nothing to see here, people, nothing to see. And do you just start running up the hill? I guess yes. so, if he's not Running up the us. hill, pray to your gods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pray to your gods. And, and Vaughn, I think, is actually pleased with this because he does not want a mob to totally yeah. um, wreck yeah, I just wanted the constable's gun. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you tell him, like, come meet it, come get us, because he doesn't, he's wearing his just bed clothes, he doesn't have a gun, you can tell him that, and he'll go and get his gun. And yeah, meet yeah that's what I was trying to say. We yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, the beast is oh, okay, at the mob tour. This is your chance for redemption, and we start going. <laughs> All right, uh, let me let me calm them down and grab my weapons, and I'll meet you. Go, go. The more we can bring in innocent <laughs> people, like it's not innocent killed. in the case You're of New York, like, but just yeah. law enforcement to fucking do our dirty work. It's <laughs> the pen and fodder. <laughs> yep. Um. All right. So, dog in hand. <laughs> you climb. You begin climbing this hill with all haste. It is very, very steep. Mom tour. This is an actual. A uh, historical site. A couple weeks ago, I saw in the comments people being like, "I've been to Mom Tour." Uh, it is, it is real. Mom Tour stands for Mother Hill. It's considered to be one of the earliest hill forts in Britain. It is 1,700 feet above sea level, so it is a climb to get to the top. You get there, and you see the first like piece of ruin you see is like a um, a gateway all that remains of a gateway into the fort, the rest of the fort, completely hollowed out, gone. All that stands is a gateway. You can pass through this gateway into just ruins. You can only think like what this building may have looked like at one time. And there's just this labyrinthine set of half crumbled walls ahead of you. Moonlight. It's like the Minotaur's maze. You listen for sounds of the girls. Yeah. Give me a spot hidden. Ooh. Oh dear. Ooh. Hard success. Thirty yeah. under sixty-nine. Yes. Extreme success. Three under eighty. Wow. Regular success. Nice. Seems kind of. <laughs> Seems pedestrian. Pretty, no. pretty Carter, pedestrian. Carter failed. Like <laughs> Carter failed. And Carter failed. Um, Just listen yeah. to the dog. <laughs> Nora, you've been crushing these uh, extremes on uh, yeah. Roll20. Loves you. Uh, all right. So 
Same thing as I said last time. Like, you're going to hear this, Margo, just seconds after Feyre's hears it. You listen for the sounds of anything, heavy breathing, uh, little girls uh, yelling, anything. You don't hear any of that. However, you do hear sound of someone struggling like, oh, 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 oh. sound like that coming from like down on the other side of the hill, like f- straight through the ruins and down. It's like echoing up and into the valley below. Is Lawrence, Lawrence yeah. w- is with us? He yes. followed us, right? Like, okay. what, 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 do you, what do you hear? What do you hear? Shh, shh, shh. Keep it down. What, you need to what? follow the noise, but you need to be quiet and don't freak out whatever you see. Yeah, can we um, use that to kind of navigate Totally. Or roll navigate for. You don't even need to with it. a with a with an extreme success. You can just keep following in that sound, which is in persistent. That allows you to echolocate it and continue. You go through these ruins. You don't get lost in the ruins, walking through history, and you get to the other side of the hill, and the sound is getting louder and louder and louder, and then you see an entrance like a wooden hole kind of near the mountain, almost going into the mountain, into the ground like a mine shaft. And there is the body of someone lying on the ground. As you approach, assuming you continue approaching, you see a man just like like twitching. He has claw marks coming down across his chest and one that has basically severed his neck so that his head is just like almost hanging by what's left and somehow the lights are still on. Like there's a nerve or two that is still connected providing him the clarity to be able to like his eyes just like looking off into nowhere. And Vaughn, as you step into the moonlight and look, you recognize this man as the one that was speaking to Lawrence Vane at the pub when he was like, well, got to go to work and put on his cap. He must be the night watchman of this mine. He's wearing that uniform, the same uniform you saw him in, and he's just laying there. And the entrance to the mine lies before you. Um, how many of those tranquilizers do we have? Um, I'll tell you. Two. Uh. Vaughn cannot abide this this spectacle of suffering. This is this is too much. Like, I don't know if you remember in Peru, one of the donkeys was was dying. Oh yeah, just shot yeah. it. Like, there's. Vaughn has has heard people screaming and crying in no man's land, and the mercy of of a, Let's see of a if relatively he's responsive first. less painful death. Um, Wait, I got first yeah. aid! <laughs> His head, like, literally is, is just hanging. It doesn't even make sense that he's still making a sound. It is straight out of a horror film. So, uh, is there a way where Car- can Carter sanity? perceive that he's about to do this? Well, I was going to say, like, hold, hold, hold on. Like, I know what you're thinking, and it's great. Well, it's not great, but I, I know what you're thinking. If you sh- fire right now, this thing will know we're coming. Well, don't fire. I just, I see what you want to do. I think, um, do you have the mental fortitude to do what you want to do or to walk away? Do you need someone else to do it? Well, it was a uh, syringe, yeah, I, not a gun, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's like a, a range, knife, but... like Carter has a knife, right? Okay. Okay. I mean, uh, we're not going <laughs> to shoot. Oh, okay. Awful. Uh, um, yeah. He's already dead. No, he's dead. He said, he said, we can't give away our position. These two kids could die. This guy's already done. He's already dead. Uh, how do I? Okay. 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 Carter um, walks up to him with this knife, I guess. What? Jesus. Um, uh, I, I think that's, that's absolutely awful. And, and I think, <laughs> I think also, I think also Vaughn even as. I'm not happy as, about it for the as record. This is not a know, dog napping. <laughs> He got the schnauzer. I think his, his Vaughn's yeah. religious sort of mania is is taking further hold. He has his 
he's less willing to play fast and loose with human life. Oh, so sure. um, it's like, no, I'm, I'm sorry, old man. Uh, and it will like stop you. It's like, I wish there was more we could do for you. I wish there was more we could do for you. Um, and just, just sits with him there and maybe like just watches the lights go out. Says a little prayer. Yeah. Fairies might say a little prayer for the first time. Watching. The song. eyes just like, like someone is controlling them with a mechanism. They're going back and forth and up and down. And eventually they just stop. <laughs> and, and, and Vaughn is like completing a silent prayer and then stands and is like, let us retrieve those girls. That they do not meet a similar fate as this. And um, he just walks into the mine shaft, I suppose. And Fair as well, like gently close his eyes. You walk into the mine shaft. Now, Vane had a torch with him when we went through the passage before. Has he been hanging on to that this whole time? I think it's safe to say he's been hanging on to it. Uh, it did Let's fall from laid. his hands when he was socked. Uh, I think there's a, a good a chance as any that it stayed lit. Um, Let's get that going. He's got the torch. Um, it is very dark in there. And as you start to enter, it's also very moist. You can hear dripping. So the fact that it's dark and maybe slippery as well dangerous footing do you provide any other light source or is Lawrence your light source well, we had flashlights right did we never yeah did we have those yeah. in the thing great then, yeah, yeah. I right, just keep in mind how many hands you have what you're what you're manipulating so you enter the mine Lawrence it's like um, I should should I can continue to go first I think, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yep. I can't hold a light with my gun, so that would I've got me. this dog. All right. oh, I, I could have one in one hand, because I've got a handgun in the other. And I've got a handgun, too. I might just put a hand on Lawrence's shoulder. I'd be like, we're, we're right with you, old boy. I think if anyone stands a chance of, of bringing her to her, her rational senses, it is the sight of someone that she loves. I suppose it's best if she sees you rather than us approaching. Um, How is your relationship, by the way? <laughs> yeah, 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 good, good. Um, she doesn't resent your nightly you dragons. Any money? I, I, we, love, we love each other. We love each other. She's, she's, she is so special to me. That's why. That's why I've gone through all this trouble to try and save her. All right. Really? Yes, I, Carry on then. I will go. Please. Please. And he proceeds forward, and you just go into this mine shaft. It's so dark. You're about 10 feet in, and it's almost like the outside world doesn't exist because of how cavernous this is. And you see him sort of slip a little bit and regain his footing. You look down, and the floor is like soaking wet. The way it slopes, the floor slopes in here. All the rain that you've got over the past few days has not flooded, but the rain has gone downhill into here, so the rocks that you're walking on are all glistening. And he says, all right. Okay, it's all right. All right. Should I, should I call her? No, no, no. Let's no. just keep, no, keep going. No, all right. Do oh. you hear anything? And, uh, yeah. he puts the torch over and you see a splattering of flesh, fresh blood on the wall. Not a lot, but a little. Just sort of dripping, he holds the torch by there. And then, after you get about 25, 30 feet in, you all hear, without any sort of check, the echoing sounds of a stifled, small scream. There, this way. And he starts walking ahead a little bit. Um, and so he's getting ahead. He's like trying to follow. You hear that sound again. And you follow, you follow, you follow. And you hear another sound now of like a... Oh, dear. He 
stops in his tracks, and as you catch up to him, you see a large space. Couple things. Uh. You see one of the girls uh, lying on the ground. She's got a cut, maybe a puncture or a slice on her neck that seems to be bleeding and she is breathing very heavily. <laughs> Still alive. But uh, bleeding. In the back of this space, there is an eight foot tall, gray skinned beast with arms that extend almost all the way to the cavern floor. It has uh, pointy ears and long, sharp teeth that it is sinking into the leg of one of the girls who is just like paralyzed. Looks like maybe still alive as it's feeding on her. Head over to roll 20 and I'll show you what this creature looks like. Uh. Mm. Oh no. Ooh. Oh, yay. Oh no. That's uh. like almost troll like, you know? Horrific looking creature. And Charles is dumbfounded. Everybody give me a sanity check. Yeah. I say, I call him, why am I calling him Charles? Lawrence. I think I've called him Charles before. Who else? It's Charles. British. <laughs> Did you oh. say sanity? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lawrence failed. Oh. Hard success. Oh, no. I need to start rolling some physical dice here. <laughs> Roll you're, 20's you're bored, like. You're bored Roll with succeeding. 20. Yes. <laughs> Roll 20's <laughs> like, we believe in you. <laughs> You've got this. Um, I'm hoping for Margot's like in my fun sake for playing a character, uh, I succeeded, but I'm hoping there's still some sanity loss. I got a hard success yeah. as well. My current sanity is at a 33, and I rolled a 35. Oh, oh no! Ooh. No! And you can't mm. spend luck you on can't. sanity rolls. Why can't you just roll up a hundred instead? Um, all right, the so breaks. the sight of this creature if you passed your check, you take zero sanity. Vaughn takes 1d6, as does Lawrence Vane, at the sight of this whole thing. The, 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 the girls, the, the feeding, the everything. 1d6. Now, where you've already okay. taken four, there's a couple right. problems with this roll. That's right. Let's, if you let's get a them out. Four, if you get a th one, two, or three, it's bad. Sure. If you get a four, you go indefinitely insane because you will have taken your, uh, you know, the, your sort threshold. of threshold for the day. If you get a five in one pop, you'll pass that threshold and then also, like, have to roll that. I mean, yeah. there's a lot going on here. You, you pretty much, let's see if you roll. Just roll that one and we're fine. Just got to roll a one. Just a one and a d6. <laughs> that was the worst laugh, Kate. I just oh, love no. now that I know where to look for for I the know. online roles. I'm just like watching. Like oh, <laughs> that laugh is amazing. <laughs> what could that laugh be? Well, the, the good news, the good news, is that I didn't roll a six and I didn't roll a five, <laughs> but oh, I did no. roll a four, which does push me across the threshold. All right, so you've taken. Uh, one fifth of your current sanity in the day. That's right. Which means you are uh, indefinitely insane. Now that can mean a lot of different things, and so I'm stalling while <laughs> I look it up because I can't remember. Ex I want to make sure that I get every little thing correct here because there's a lot riding on it. Um, yes, 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 yes. Talk to me about what you're thinking while I'm looking at this. Here. Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he becomes, uh, on losing a fifth or more of the current sanity in one day, the investor becomes indefinitely insane. No investigator is able to shrug off this amount of sanity drain. A day, in this instance, 
is defined by the keeper, usually lasting until the investigator reaches a place of safety in which they can rest and recover their wits. Sounds like where we are right now. Right. It seems like you'll be fine in like 10 minutes. No. Um, Depending on the situation, it may mean surviving until dawn, sitting down for a nice cup of tea, or having a good night's sleep. Indefinite insanity lasts until the character is cured or recovered. So the more sort of prescient thing is Mm -hmm. that this will now last until you can, like it'll last for the rest of England, really. So any other sanity you take, you you any sanity break now makes you indefinitely insane. Unless I get re- receive help. Unless you receive uh, some sort of help. Like by morning, you'll probably be okay, but you're back to where you were at the end of the New York thing, where right. just any little thing sets you off. Right. Now, what I'm trying to remember, I believe, you are going to have a bout of madness from this. Uh, Michael, can you just speak to that real quickly behind the scenes? I believe that, uh, yes, you do have a bout of yes. madness. Yes. All right, so. Yes, yeah, so a bout of madness. Um, let's. And we'll see you next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so how does this manifest? I am right, holding. So how does this manifest? Yeah, let's, this, co- uh, let's collaborate on this. Uh, let's, let's. Yeah, um. I've sustained I... the shock of seeing the effigy of the of the deity, and now I see the taint. Uh-oh. There it is, <laughs> uh, as it were. Um, you see the taint. I maybe there's some part of you in this moment, because this seems even more horrifying to me in a weird way, where you see this horrible creature feasting on this child's leg and suddenly your snap lets you pierce the veil and you actually see this beautiful young woman feasting Mm. on the child's leg so it's almost like you can see beyond her transformation into how you've idealized Eloise in your mind you see this girl doing it Mm -hmm. and it takes you out of it. Now you can still act. This is more of like a role-playing uh, exercise for the rest of this encounter, because that's where we're in. We're in an encounter. Now, those of you who have uh, guns drawn, which is everybody except Carter. Oh, a Dagger dog. Carter. Old Dagger and Dog Carter. <laughs> uh, let's get into business here. So, Margo, your deck. Wait, sorry. Is- what what happened to Lawrence? Yeah, what happened to Lawrence? He failed. Uh, and the dog. Oh yeah. He's <laughs> the, the dog. Oh, the, roll do- <laughs> the dog is pissing all over. Carter. Oh, oh, shit. Quite mad. This is shit. Quite mad. Oh, what the fuck? The dog lost. Uh, you know, the dog has a different sanity system. Um, but yeah, what happens to Lawrence? I'm gonna say Lawrence. Uh, like backs up when he sees what his sister has become and sees what she's capable of. And as he backs up, he like slips and like falls backward and uh, hits his head. And he's just like screaming on the ground and his screams are echoing throughout the cave, and sort of adding to this element of surprise. Horrible scene. Yeah. <laughs> and it looks at you. Margo, you have a dex of 80, but with your gun drawn, that'll bring you up to a, a 130. Uh, Margo, you have a dex of 55, but that will bring you up to 105. You get a plus 50 with your gun drawn. Uh, Vaughn, with yours, you go from 40 to 90, which is also clutch. So, mm-hmm. as usual, Margo, you go first in this horrible, uh, horrible situation. Uh, uh. I mean, somehow still able to keep her wits about her while this is all happening. The one child is off to the side, like bleeding out, but fine for now. The other child is being eaten. Do I? Yeah, and I'll say as the combat is beginning, it kind of flings the child down or drops the child down because now you guys are its focus. It sees us. Yeah, I don't want you to be afraid. Yeah, are we in like a? Uh, talk about the geography of this of this situation. Like, are we in like a bowl? Like, it's kind there... of like a bowl. Yeah, there's another uh, like a uh, thin little pathway on the opposite side here. But this was the first larger room that you came into, and uh, it must have felt safe enough to stop here to feast. Okay. So there's one way in and one way out. So I feel like Margot's remembering the um, the town or the stories of that the beast was shot like in the chest and like still ran away. 
type of thing? Or was that some wolf? Yeah. Or were they even shot? Was it just like a flavor? Like, yeah, I shot it, so it yeah, kind I took of care must of it. have died. Case anyway, she's closed. thinking about all that and hoping it's not true because she's going to shoot at the okay. thing. Yeah. Okay. Like yeah, any normal sane thing. person would do. All right. Um, all right. So I have my... It's one shot, right? You don't have multiple shots or do you have multiple shots? You have the... Um, for to shotguns, shoot. I can fire twice at the same target with no penalty taken for the second shot. Um, wow. It, it, okay. It's a penalty if I try to shoot a different target because shotgun, I guess. Makes, right. Mm. That makes sense. Uh, so I can do two per round, same target. All right, and you don't take the penalty die because normally with automatic fire or something like that, you can shoot, like I think Feyruz can shoot three times, but each takes a penalty. Now, yeah, if you are, get into point blank range... You're getting a lot closer, but then you get a bonus die. Yeah, I mean, that sounds tempting. Maybe if I was like a little desperate, but I don't think she wants to get to point blank range yet. But yeah, these are my uh, personal notes from Michael uh, from a while ago. Okay. Yeah, so I can do, I'll I'll do the one. Uh, Oh God, I have a separate shotgun Uh, score. It's a fail, it's a Mm -hmm. 55. You, okay. can put, you can spend luck on combat rolls. Can spend luck on the on combat rolls. Yep. Um, it's just I have two in this round, so it's like sure. do I just want to roll the second one and then maybe try to push that one? Or no, I can't push. You can't push. Just it's just the luck sitch. Yeah. Um, how much luck are you sitting on? I have twenty nine, so I could make this one a hit. I think 50, 55 to thirty four. Mm-hmm. Right, but it's a lot. Like almost all my luck. Take your take your other shot. I'm just gonna try to take my other shot and see if take it works. Take your other shot. Okay. That's a fifty. I'm so gonna spend another my, fail. Another fail, but I'm I'm gonna spend my luck on this one to make this one a regular success. So that would be sixteen points of luck. Okay. Sixteen points of luck. Regular success. Okay. Um, how much damage do you deal? Damage, 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 damage. Well, it sounds like it, it's, it depends on how her distance, according to Mike. Well, the way it works with ranged firearms is you either need a regular, hard, or extreme sec- success based on the range of your gun and the distance. So, um, you're not like where it's not diving for cover. You're just rolling one of the. As long as you get a regular success, I'm going to say that you're within the requisite distance uh, to hit it. Because you didn't okay. go up close to get that bonus die. You are. What's the range? Does you do? Do you know what the range of it is? Um, the range. It doesn't have it on the character sheet. Which is okay. Fine. Well, weapons. I'm going to say you're within range uh, for a regular success to be a hit. Okay. And we'll figure and then, out the exact range. I'm also like, I feel like I I use my weapons so in, infrequently. I'm trying to understand what this damage means again. It says 4d6 slash 1d6. I'm assuming one is like extreme success and one is regular. Uh, 4d6 slash 1d6? Oh, 46 4d- is five yards. Okay. All right. So, I, I you know, I think you're oof, five yards away. I think this is probably, a pretty enclosed space. Yeah, oh. pretty enclosed space. <laughs> really? Five, five yards is five not, yards is not, fifteen feet. That's you know? fifteen I feet. So. I don't think you're shooting a shotgun from thirty feet away. Do you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. So I didn't think about it like that. Yeah. I just assumed you. Okay. So All within right. like three or four feet, like you did with uh, Makanga Madari, that was like point blank range shotgun in his face, and you fired. This yeah. is going to be four d six damage. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Oh god! Oh god! Okay. So that's, oh wow, nine, it's 14 points of damage. All right, Ooh, noise. 14 points of damage. So, you know, the way shotgun blast goes off, just like scatters and it hits, it's like boom, 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 boom. And it does damage, it's bleeding, but it does not look phased by the damage at all. Oh. You heard it but it's still standing. Does it seem like it won't drop until like it's like physically can't do it anymore and like its brain will just keep going? You almost feel like it it's the whatever its skin is is like protected. Like it didn't do the full amount of damage that you wish oh. that it could have done. Okay. So <clears throat> so kind I feel of like shrugs it off a little bit. You see me miss the first one, but hit the second one. Do a lot of damage, like more than she's ever done <clears throat> using the shotgun so far. 
and like seeing this beast still just like keep going. It's terrifying. Feyruz, you are up. <sighs> Feyruz has seen this whole thing happen right in front of her. You can see her eyes kind of dart as she's like thinking to herself. And she turns back towards Vaughn, plants a big fat kiss on his lips. And with the syringe that they have gotten, because her strength and con are pretty high, will run towards this thing and try to stab it in its neck. Oh my god. Feyruz Gibran rushes at this thing with one of the two syringes. All right. I feel like this is a brawl here, okay? And it's going to uh, do what monsters naturally do, which is fight back. You're trying Mm. to stab it with this syringe. And it is going to try and fight back. Of course, the way it works is like, you guys have the option to dodge. I have the option to dodge too, but monsters tend to just fight back. When you dodge, uh, tie goes to the, you know, it's good to tie. Here, if we tie, where you're the attacker, you're gonna do damage. But if I get a better success than you, high risk, high reward, you're gonna take damage. So give me a bra roll as Feyruz just rushes at this thing with a syringe. I can't look, I'm gonna click on roll 20, but I can't. I'm gonna throw up. Ugh. Oh dear. What? That is, that is a failure that I cannot recover from. An un- beyond luck range. Beyond luck range. Okay. Oh, God. oh my God. I almost looked at the pulp rules and I was like, oh God, no, that's no good. <laughs> All right. So let's see what happens with me. 91. That is a fail. Oh. So 91 on the fight back. You don't sick the syringe in. It goes to claw you and misses. You guys have been blessed for 20, 31 episodes with crazy rolls going in your favor. Will that luck continue? Vaughn, you are up. You have a gun. Oh, you are my. the love oh. of your life. You feel just say. made out a little. You just no, made no, out a little. Like, I think <laughs> that maybe like even shook me out of my reverie a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm, I'm as, as you said, this madness is sort of manifesting in that like, I, I think Vaughn's interpretation of this is, I am not seeing, I saw the beast, the beast for a moment, but I've been gifted with a vision, not of the beast, but of her soul. There is some, there is some part of her that is still uncorrupted and alive. You know, though, so her, I'm seeing just a young, my idealized version of this young patrician girl, like, eating a child <laughs> looking at me. In some way, this is maybe even more terrifying. That's what a, I'm saying. <laughs> than a, than a, uh, than a horrible werewolf. And then, and then I see this attack take place. And now, yes, I gotta, I've got to assist to save, to save the life of this, of this woman who's willing to sacrifice everything. We are, we are all of us called to great things, but perhaps the greatest of all things is sacrifice, and she is demonstrating the utmost of Christian virtues. And so, what sort of man would I be if I allowed her to make this sacrifice in vain? Bang! <laughs> Pop! And um, I will try to assist her in this in this attempt by distracting or stalling this beast with a, with a pop from the handgun. Keep in mind, uh, where you're shooting into melee, you get a penalty die. On a fumble, you hit Feyruz. Cool. Well, you needn't worry because that's a failure. But I could, no, I can spend luck to make it a success. Yes. Ah. But but I've got to roll the penalty. The penalty die. Okay, did you get that close? You You got right in there? Sorry? You got up so close that it's at penalty range? Or you're doing the multiple? It's penalty because I'm It's penalty because he's shooting in the melee. Yeah. Oh, I see. Into a melee situation. Brutal. Yeah. Is the penalty die worse? Way worse. Uh, (sighs) 
Yeah, it's hard. It's really hard. And uh, the fact that you have fumble means you hit your ally. Like, things can go real wrong real fast. But imagine, you're, you're undergoing this thing. You're seeing the girl. You're not seeing the ghoul. And mm -hmm. you're seeing Feyru standing there, and you're like, uh, boom, it hits the back wall. Chunks of limestone fly everywhere. And now it's her turn. Just, just uh, um, a question before. Yes. Did I? I still have it in my hand. I yes. just wasn't able to stick it. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So there's still yeah. a chance that this could happen. Right. Also, I'm still I, just throwing it out there. If a shotgun did not do as much damage into her skin as we want it to, fourteen points. I, we just have to be prepared for maybe a syringe is not going to break through. That. But they drugged her. So and when that she was, was but when so, she was human, right? You shall see. All right. Anyway. I don't something think we should to, something to try consider. It. These yeah. things definitely should be running through your head. You've got a like high risk, high reward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is bleeding. Like, don't uh, make no mistake. Sure, like, sure. When you hit it, it's bleeding. But like, without like spoiling the meta of the game, it it has protection against that type of damage. Um, I'm looking here at Lawrence's decks. So Lawrence didn't have a gun, but I'm gonna say, uh, oh, yeah, Lawrence has a lower dex than than she does in this form, so she goes. Okay. First attack is on Feyruz. Feyruz is standing right there. First going, attack. It is going to uh, just go to rake its claw. Do you want to dodge, or do you want to try to fight back? If I try to fight back, is that a brawl? Um, you tell me. If that's what you think or you're doing, yeah. Or is it just like a strength... You could fight brawl. back with the needle, which would be, you know, melee, brawl. Okay. Um, Is there a melee skill separate from brawl? Uh, I think it's combat. just based on, like, the weapon you have. It's yeah, just, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you probably don't have points in syringe, but you're trying to do a stabbing motion. If you have points if at If I knife, stab at her, it's, I have a better chance than if I dodge. So I guess yeah. I'll just try to... Stab at her. I also right. have the other the gun in my hand. On the other hand, so you do have the gun. Uh, you can't. I don't believe you can fight back with a gun. With a gun. Yeah. So I will try if I roll a brawl and try to stab at her again. Okay. All right. So you roll brawl and I will roll mine. That looked. I can't tell if that's a good face or a bad face. You've gone through every emotion. All right. So I have a regular success. I have a regular failure. Oh no. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> All right, so she claws you across the chest for seven points of damage. Oh, oh. I'm still alive, but. <sighs> How's where things get a little hairy? Is that a major wound? I believe that's a major wound. Yep, what is, is your a, total hit That is hit a major points? wound. I'm at a major wound. Uh, I have a total hit points of 13. I'm at a six, so it is at a major wound. It's a major wound. I had my major wound chart open, and then I got so excited. I'm like trying not to be tense, but like I'm pulling for you guys. Um, give me one second here. Sanity, it's in combat. This is our, first, I believe, maybe only our second major wound in combat. Here we go. Combat flow chart. Oh, I love this. All right, so you got a major wound. This is real, real bad. Character takes damage. Damage is uh, equal to this. more than half. All right, you fall prone. Give me a con roll. If you fail the con roll, you fall unconscious. Luckily, this is like one of my highest okay. success. All right, so you fall prone as the, the and it's probably the best thing for you to take one big hit and hit the ground because now maybe you can play possum. Mm -hmm. You do not fall unconscious, but tick the major wound box on yep. your sheet. Yeah, it's on there. It now moves up to Margo. And goes to no. claw. Margo. Margo, do you want to dodge or fight back? And you can't fight back with the shotgun. So I definitely want to dodge. I'm not fighting back. I just did like a pretty, like I missed my first shotgun roll, but the second one, I could see that was a pretty beefy one and it didn't do much. So right. I'm dodging. 
Okay, Ty would go to the runner here. If I get a higher success than you, it doesn't matter if we, uh, it'll be a hit on my end. If we tie successes, then you will successfully dodge. Give okay. me that roll and I will do the same. Pee my pants. Oh, I rolled the wrong dice. <laughs> You're lucky. Oh good. my God. I rolled two tens dice, I'm so nervous. Okay, I was one point away from a hard success. I got a regular success. I got a 17 under 52. That's definitely hard. Wow, all right, so you dodge <laughs> oh, out of the way God. of this thing. Oh, yeah, like so overwhelmed seeing like Fey Rouge just run into it and almost get swiped. So like maybe she's prepared for how it swipes for a second and is able to dodge. Hum. In the light of the room, you dodge out of the way. It has another attack. Classic three attack goal. <laughs> oh my god. I have to now I will decide if I continue attacking Kate, go after Carter, or go after Vaughn. One, two, Margo, three, four, Carter, five, six, Vaughn. Hmm. One. I forgot what the numbers meant. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> One is Margo. Oh, I no. wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Another and it kind of makes sense. Like it goes to claw you and misses. It uses its final attack to go and bite you. I'm going to dodge again. I'm not. Me- no. All right. Now, Smooth Michael, chime in sour. behind the scenes. I believe her dodge roll gets a penalty or I get a bonus die. Because you only have one, I get a bonus die on this because oh, because you're you, able to move. Yeah, it's the outnumbered rule because I have more attacks than you do. Yeah. When you are dodging for the second time in a round, I get a bonus die. I'm like exerting myself trying to dodge again. I'm going so to do this me. horrible maneuver on you. Give oh, you're, me. You're having fun. I'm well. <laughs> I'm not. I'm very nervous. I'm very very nervous. And go ahead. You give me your dodge. I'm going to give you this. Okay. Wow. 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 Wow, for sure. I rolled a 98 <laughs> and an 88. <laughs> yes. I yes. rolled a 50 under 52. Oh, my yes. God. Oh, my God. Do you I believe mean, in miracles? Is that what I they cannot. Say? Teeth? A 98 and an 88. And you are able to dodge out of the way. You could have failed. It wouldn't have mattered. It misses on its third attack. Let's keep this party rolling. Carter, you have a dog and a dagger. What do you do? The dog's barking. <laughs> Lawrence is... Actually, it's Lawrence Vane's turn. Lawrence looks to you and says, uh, I'm, I, 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 I want to give him a turn. You need all yeah, the help yeah. you can get. He's like, what, what do I do? What do I do? I, 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 I have nothing. Okay. All right. Uh, Troy, if, let's talk environment. Uh, we're in a mine shaft, right? Yeah. In this bowl thing. Are there loose... <laughs> okay. Are there loose like boulders and rocks anywhere? There, there are rocks. What are you, uh, what are you going for here? I mean to like get behind one and fucking and, like roll a boulder onto her. Roll a giant boulder at her. Um, what is your strength? It's pretty good. Uh, but the reason I'm asking this before I even respond to Lawrence is if he can help me. Yeah, I would say that even if there was something like this, this thing is eight feet tall. Any boulder, you'd need a, the size of a boulder to actually do damage to her. I just don't think even you okay, and Lawrence that's could, fair. could push it with enough velocity. The other question is, structurally speaking, can we cave this motherfucker in? You could, but then there is the question of the two We gotta get girls. everybody out. We gotta get yeah. everybody out. Yeah, and everybody else. I imagine, especially if you had dynamite, uh, you could. Okay, but that's okay. So it's not like things like support beams are rickety and we can fucking smash. No, there are there are certainly wooden support beams. You could start hacking at those. Um, things could get real volatile. Yeah. Okay. Forget it. Uh, I love that this is what's going through Carter's mind. He's looking at boulders. He's like, maybe we cave it in, kill them all. Uh, he's just looking down at this dinky knife. He's got to think of something. <laughs> 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 all right. Uh, so so Lawrence is talking to me. He's like, just talk to her. Say something to her. It's your sister. Eloise, Eloise, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Look, it's it's me, Lawrence. Look, look. And he goes up to her and like, just goes to like pound on her chest to like, to like try and make sense of it. And I'm going to turn that into an attack roll that she is going to 
attack him back. Oh, shit. So no. if you'll pardon me playing with myself here, I'm going to do it <laughs> straight by the book. So I'm going to use his brawl roll, which he failed with an 82. And uh, she will fight back with a claw, which I succeed on a 30. Oh, my God. Fuck. And then I'm going to do, I mean, I'm doing this right down Main Street. I do 11 points of damage oh, to Vane. How many points did he have? And he had... 15 hit points. Oh, jeez. Wow. He's oh, a he's easy. That is a major wound. Yeah. <laughs> that is a major wound. I'm shocked that he's not dead. I mean, he she almost just died there. I love the, like, this can all just happen straight by what's meant to be. He's going to hit the floor. Let's see if he goes unconscious. He has a pretty good con, and I roll an 11. So he hits the ground, and not unlike Feyre's, uh does not fall unconscious. But tick a little major wound for old Lawrence oh, Vane. Jesus. He just goes up, says, can you hear me? And she just, Aah! and he hits the ground. Blood squirts out of him. It's your turn, Carter. Okay, so Feyre's has both syringes, right? No, just yeah. one. Yeah, I'd say you probably have the other one. Yeah. Let's well, not out. Yeah, I'm gonna drop this dog <laughs> and <laughs> try to hit her with the syringe. Okay. Ah, <sighs> okay. Is there a way to at least position, like, get behind her? Like, yeah. Um, yeah, you could kind of like she, take like, the engage long. engage with Margo and Lawrence. You take the long way around. You know, this is all happening in real time. So, like, yeah. while they're doing this, you could be circling the room to get behind her and kind of come up from behind and do that. It doesn't mean she's not going to be able to get you. Michael saying I get a bonus. Oh wait, that's for somebody else. Fuck. That's an old that's an old message. <laughs> yes. Um if you want to try and uh, see if while this commotion is happening, you can stealthily sneak around, uh, I would argue that maybe she wouldn't be able to uh, try and fight back if, if you, you let were to me, succeed. I'll roll a stealth. On a stealth, and I'm gonna do an opposed roll with her uh, spot hidden in this form. To see if uh, See what happens here. No, it's, fine. it's finally nice to roll dice. All right, so father, I fail. All right, okay. so you kind of get around for her, and she just is like turning towards you as you go to strike. Yeah, and he just goes sup, and then he comes at her with this syringe. <clears throat> uh, she goes which, to backhand you with her hand. You said it was a brawl. Uh, yes, brawl. Unless you have a knife skill, which is better, you could use that. I don't have any. You're basically, doing a stab. I have no motion. skills. All right, give me yours. I'll give you mine. All right, I got a regular success. I got a hard success. Fuck. Oh, no. Okay. She claws you for six points of damage. Ooh. Jeez. Is that major wound town? I have 12 hit points total. That's exactly major wound. Fuck. So... Give me a con roll to see if you fall unconscious. You hit the ground, not unlike Feyre's, not unlike Sir Lawrence Vane. Now I roll this shit. I got a one. Okay. That's great. So you've got to make, I mean, best possible situation there. You hit the ground, major wound, down half your hit points, and you're conscious on the ground. Uh. You look over, you see Feyre's hit the ground as well. Feyre's is conscious. Lawrence Vane, you know, suffering some sort of break. He's down. Vaughn and Margot are the only ones up as we go into I, round two. Uh, I should have spent Shit. lots to go hard. It didn't matter. It wouldn't have mattered, right? It wouldn't have mattered. Fuck. Margot, uh, you are up. Oh, my. God. Oh, God. Good um, news is that we're all on the ground. <laughs> this is. Uh, so I'm watching it like. Things are looking a bit bad for the Mystery Squad. Right. I'm not like watching this. it down so my thanks. friends. I don't want to, like, run away, because then what? Um, but. You could live forever if you run away. I guess I could live forever, but then what is life? Then this becomes friends? the Margot show. <laughs> <laughs> Retrieve me as a zombie. I've left it in my will and the spell. <laughs> um, I guess try to shoot it two more times, because even though it's not, you're up going, close now, though. Going, th- I'm out of ammo. Oh, I'm out I gotta of reload. Ammo. I have to reload. Okay. 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 Reloading. You can reload. Okay. Let me see. I wonder if you can reload and shoot. I don't think you can reload and shoot on the same round. You can reload and fire one shell in a round with a penalty die. That's awesome. Thank you, Michael. Um, 
You basically, um, you could take this round to reload and then have both shots ready to go. You could go point mm -hmm. blank, no penalties next round. Yeah. Or you could do we this, but then through. you're going to have the same situation next round, no ammo. Yeah. Yeah, I think I want to reload and not do the penalty one just because yeah. the other way sounds smarter if there is a way to smart a smart way to fight this beast. Um, I guess I'm trying to think like while I'm reloading is there anything else I can do? Uh uh like I don't know. Shoot the dog in its general direction. So maybe it <laughs> attacks the dog next. Yeah, did you bring the dog with you when you snuck you around the back the there, dog. Carter? You dropped the dog. You said you dropped the dog to get the I dropped the syringe. dog. Yeah. You want to try and push the dog in the direction of like, the... Eloise? This is so awful. Good. Shoo the dog. Of all the living creatures in this cave right now, I feel like the dog's <laughs> got to be the first to go, right? Even more than us, the kids, this this brother. Like, it's the yeah. dog. Yeah. All right, that's fine. You're, with, your, with your move action, essentially, you're going to shoo the dog in the direction of this. Hey, in the meta of the game, it has multiple attacks. Maybe it'll use one of those attacks Maybe on the it'll dog. waste one on the dog. The dog's very small. Maybe it's got like a high dex. Who knows? <laughs> that might be the difference so between... So while she's like fumbling to reset yeah. and reload, she's like, shoot, go this way. She's trying to corral it to get it from escaping to like go <laughs> towards the beast or something. Yeah, I mean, this this is might be the difference between one of you definitely dying and two of you definitely dying. <laughs> it is now Feyruz's uh, turn. Feyruz, you're on the ground. You just got... Bang! Boom! Hit the ground, but you're still conscious, and you're down there. I imagine you could still shoot. Uh, you've got the syringe. Uh, there might be some sort of penalty die thing, Michael. Let us know shooting from prone. I'm not 100% sure, but you, you tell me what you want to do. If you want to crawl over and try and stick it in its foot, I don't see any penalty there. But maybe you just want to unload? I don't know. What are my... With everything going on, what are my chances of crawling back a little just out of melee range at this point good good yeah i mean the way you hit the ground this thing moved on to another target right away so until you start attacking it again there's a chance that it may just assume that you're dead and it'll yeah. come and feast on you later when everyone else falls <laughs> um so what, what i mean what would i roll for that for to, just to, to crawl to back just that's your move away. action that's your yeah. Yeah, you're just you're you're crawling back. Oh, now, so I'm if able you want to do so yeah, stealthily, move. you can do that. Um, you can try I could, to stealthily crawl. I could try that. I could try back. to stealth away. Yeah, I'm gonna try to do that. Okay, it's not looking at you. You hit the Extreme ground. Extreme success. Okay, I'll roll my spot hidden. I doubt that I'm. I know I did not roll an extreme success. So. You move back, like on the ground, you're just crawling on your stomach, gushing blood from mm -hmm. multiple scratches across your chest. And Do I still you... have an action? Or is oh that yeah, me? absolutely, that's your move action. You're just moving back there, and now it doesn't see you, which may give you a little bit of a bonus, or may cancel out any penalty you have from being on the ground. I'm Do going it. to fire at this thing. Okay, one shot, three shots. Uh, I mean, what am I able to do? Because I, I do have, it's a automatic. Yeah, so with an automatic, you could do one shot with no penalty. If you fire all three shots, you got three chances to hit, but each one comes with a penalty die. I'm bleeding. Uh, I'm going to just fire one shot and take my those better chances. Okay. How far back do you think you went? I mean, what's what's the space like? And also, I'm crawling and bleeding, so I'm not sure if I'd be able to get very far. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason I ask is that if you stayed within point-blank range, you could go full auto, and that would cancel out the penalty. Oh, that let's do that. For that, yeah. yeah and I would just, I would, and then I would let your stealth cancel out any penalties from from, from trying to shoot to the ground. So you okay. basically give me three shots and see what happens. All right, so is that, that's three, um... Three guns. Uh, three handgun rolls? All yep, right. three handgun rolls. And, and let me I'm, see, how many were the, I mean, I'm just checking the damage on each one. Each one is a, so it's a 1d6 for each one? Yep, and then if All you right. were to crit, uh, I think you get impaled damage for a gun, which we'll deal with if and when you crit. All right, so first one. Let's see if we can get a hit first. Please. Is a success. Nice. All right, regular success. Regular success for four points of damage. Okay. Some of that gets through. All right. Uh, second mm. one is just no penalties. I, I 
It's so just penalties, one. nice clean shot. I fail that one. Okay. Pow! Pow! And third. Point blank from the ground. Extreme success. Yes. Uh extreme success this could be it this is so, when you get damage because uh, bonus damage because you're using an impaling weapon an impaling yes. weapon you get max damage so what are you doing a d4 or a d6 D d6 so six so points. you get six plus an extra damage roll and i believe the extra damage roll is another d6 Correct me if I'm wrong. Six! Yeah! Whoa! Six plus one D6, so you do 12 points of damage. Damn. I'm gonna lift the veil here. I'm gonna cry. Go ahead. It has one hit point left. Oh! <laughs> what? A hundred per- it had sev- seven. You just did oh 12. It takes half of that for six. Damn. It has one hit point left. And the reason I'm lifting that veil is because if you do not take it out, it's probably going to kill one of you. Oh, my God. And Vaughn is the only one with a chance to do it. Toss <laughs> <laughs> the dog! <laughs> it will then have three attacks. Hey, maybe one will be burned on the dog. But two of you are below half hit points. My handgun skill is so low. My long gun skill is How much, do you, how much, how much do you have luck? How much luck do you have? I mean, um, a, f- a fair amount that might, okay. that might, I might have to use it all. Um, it's funny. We do such little combat. Whenever it comes back up, we have to like relearn. Combat uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I got to relearn how to not shit my pants right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, Too Vaughn late. is in this fugue state, just watching, watching in his mind's eye, Eloise vein rip. <sighs> Feru's open uh, slash into Tillinghast. Um, this wild-eyed and feral young woman. Uh, and then I see uh, the the brave and doughty uh, Feru's Gibran just unload into this creature. Um, and uh, I, yeah, I'm in an unsteady hand. <laughs> raises its pistol. Point blank? Yes. Might as well yes. get that bonus damn bonus chance. The bonus, bonus chance is die. what again? You roll the tens die twice and take the better. Amazing. Okay. So if you roll a 32 and a 52, you would take the 32. Come on, baby. Come on. Back. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Not brawl, but but rather. Uh. Okay. That's a failure, but I roll a tens. So you got a 62. Okay. I'm going to spend, can I use, I'm going to spend 10 points of luck. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to spend 10 points of luck. I'm going to spend 20 points of luck <laughs> and make that a hard success. <laughs> I don't even think at, at that range, you won't even have to do that. A regular success is enough. And 10, 10 it is. So what you roll a 32 and you spent I rolled a 10 32. to make it a 22? Or I, I'm sorry, a 12 to make it a 20. To make it a 20. All right, so you hit. How much damage do you do? Um, I will tell you. And the damage is not affected by that? I, I just... No. Okay, um, here we go. You only get bonus damage uh, on extreme success. You use regular success, hard, or extreme based on your range. But you're all, you guys are within range. Um, six points of damage. Ooh creature falls back to the pit from whence you came yeah the creature falls and hits the ground and as it does so it immediately changes back to the form of Eloise Vane. You see it just like almost melt into the ground. It's its whole shape from eight feet tall kind of melt into the ground, leaving behind this young, beautiful girl. Let more than half a size smaller 
than the creature that it was. And she is just eyes looking straight up, wide open, dead. Lawrence Vane just kind of crawls over on his hands and knees over to the body and just like collapses on her, holding her corpse and just weeping. You hear the gurgles of the girl whose throat was punctured, still breathing, trying to breathe. The one whose leg was chewed. You look over Vaughn and you can't even tell in that moment if she's uh, alive or not. Feyruz is down on the ground. Your fiance, Carter, down on the ground. Margot is still standing there with a smoking shotgun. We fade out of that scene. Sawa? Sawa? Vaughn, Vaughn, it's okay. My God, we have to get them to... We will. No one else is going to die today. From there, we see a series of, like, panning camera shots. We see the offices of Mickey Mahoney at the scoop. We fade from one to the other, fade out of that, fade up on Miles Shipley's house. Fade from that into the Penhue Foundation at night. From there we see Empire Spices, the Blue Pyramid Club, Scotland Yard. All of these scenes are at night until finally we see a scene during the day. Kind of like fades in on this elegant country estate. There's like a long white picket fence surrounding massive acreage in the distance and a beautiful three-story farmhouse estate standing in the distance. We see a car kind of pull into view. We just see like one of its tires. We hear the sound of the engine being turned off, dirt crackling from beneath the tires. We hear the sound of a door open and see a figure, can't tell if it's a man or a woman, walking up to a small sign that says Eagle's Grange. And we just slowly scan up the body of this figure. Can't quite tell if it's a man or a woman, like I said, but we stop at their wrist, which is peeking out from underneath their shirt. And on the wrist is the trademark tattoo of the order. The figure covers the tattoo with their shirt sleeve and begins walking towards Eagle's Grange. And we'll see you next week. Oh, oh no! Oh, who baby. could it be? <laughs> who could it be? Oh, who no. could it be? <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck. We're alive. Oh, I can't shit. believe we survived. Have a nice, relaxing role play at Eagle's Grange. Please, just for the next four episodes. Let's just chill. <laughs> we need some R and R. We deserve it. <laughs> oh, oh my God. God, we did it. I can't believe you. Oh my god. I can't believe I can't believe it either. You survived.